liberals, gripped by delusions, fueled by a propagandized media, are basically demonstrating that they are essentially children. What if this, all of this, is a simulation? I mean, it's a crazy idea, but what if it is? And if there are multiple simulations, how come we have to be in the one where Donald Trump becomes the Republican nominee for president? The New York Post reports, the University of Michigan offered its traumatized students coloring books and Play-Doh to calm them. The University of Kansas reminded its stressed out kids that therapy dogs, a regular campus feature, were available. Cornell University, an Ivy League school, had a campus-wide cry-in with officials handing out tissues and hot chocolate. Tufts University offered its devastated students arts and craft sessions at campuses from elite Yale to Connecticut to Iowa and beyond. Professors canceled classes and or exams either because students asked or because instructors were too distraught to teach. And now the globalists are making idle threats based on the blanket of fear stitched together by misinformed liberals and the mockingbird media. I congratulate the newly elected president of the United States, Donald Trump. This is uh, uh, for sure a difficult moment in the relationship between the United Nations the United States and uh, the European Union. And Amerikaner have entschieden, that this responsibility in the next four years Donald Trump tragen soll. Deutschland and America are through Werte verbunden. Demokratie, Freiheit, den Respekt vor dem Recht und der Würde des Menschen, unabhängig von Herkunft, Hautfarbe, Religion, Geschlecht, sexueller Orientierung oder politischer Einstellung. We trade about 600 billion dollars a year. So you have so every year you have trade flows totaling 600 billion dollars across the border with China and the US. And so if that if that flow ever gets interrupted, a lot of people are going to be out of jobs. On, on Mr. Trump and what he would do, he's going to work with everyone. And, and you say, you, know, you say, how can you, how can you bridge the rift? I think, Chris, that we ought to realize that where we may disagree politically and ideologically, people have far more in common in this country than they may realize when they're in the heat of the political battle. And I'd also like to congratulate Mr. Donald Trump with his victory in these elections. No, Russia готова и хочет восстановления полноформатных отношений с Соединенными Штатами. But Russia is ready and wants to restore the full-fledged relations with the United States. Well, I congratulate Donald Trump on being elected as the next president of the United States. Britain and the United States are and will remain strong and close partners on trade, security and defense. We have a, a long-standing and enduring special relationship which is built on our shared values of freedom of democracy and enterprise and I look forward to working with President-elect Trump to ensure that we can maintain the security and prosperity of our two nations in the future. David Rothkopf, your reaction to what the British Prime Minister said? I think it was a fairly predictable reaction. That these reactions after an election tend to be anodyne. As it happens, she's kind of a political cousin of Trump's. You know, she uh, is a, a kind of xenophobic, uh, a right of center politician who's gotten into office talking about getting out of Europe and 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 uh, uh, attacking refugees. Donald Trump is the president elect, whether liberals like it or not. He will enter the Oval Office to preside over a country that was deeply divided by community organizer Barack Obama, not Donald Trump. Trump will roll his sleeves up to rebuild the infrastructure of the American economy destroyed by Bill Clinton, George Bush, and President Obama, not. Donald Trump. Trump will be faced with a mass migration of displaced refugees fleeing the war-torn countries thrown into chaos by Obama and Hillary Clinton, not Donald Trump. To the liberals still clinging to their security blankets out there, give your new president a chance to improve even your ungrateful life. John Baum for Infowars.com. We'll be back. Stay with us. Donald Trump just last week he confirmed to the National Review that he is again considering a run in 2016. Do it. Do it. Look at me. Do it. I will personally write you a campaign check now on behalf of this country which does not want you to be president but which badly wants you to run. 
Donald Trump has been saying that he will run for president as a Republican. Didn't work, bullies. Since I just assumed he was running as a joke. Nobody listens to you. Is that people think that Donald Trump is a clown. Do Donald, Donald Trump is a clown. I mean, does anybody seriously think that Donald Trump is serious about running for president? Donald Trump. You know, he's a clown. A likely moderator, yeah. but parents apparently believes that Donald Trump is a clown. Which Republican candidate has the best chance of winning the general election? Of the declared ones right now, Donald Trump. <laughs> President Obama will go down as perhaps the worst president in the history of the United States, exclamation point, at real Donald Trump. <laughs> well, at real Donald Trump, at least I will go down as a president. So basically, this is the beginning of the end for Trump. The beginning of the end. The beginning of the end? This is probably starting of the beginning of the end for, for Donald Trump. Donald, uh, you're not going to be able to insult your way to the presidency. The strongest person usually isn't the loudest one in the room. So right now, we have Hillary's about a 75 or an 80 percent favorite. We have different versions yeah, of the right. forecast you can look at. Paul has Hillary Clinton up by double digits nationally, 12 points, 50 to 38, four-way race. Clinton leading in Florida, Clinton leading in North Carolina, Clinton leading in Ohio, Clinton leading in Nevada. I could go on and on and on. Uh, I continue to believe Mr. Trump will not be president. And so, right now, Mr. Trump, to answer your call for political honesty, I just want to say, you're not going to be president, all right? It's been fun. It's been great. I love you. But, but, come on, come on, buddy. We have a major projection right now. Donald Trump will take Ohio. That's it, I project. Donald Trump will carry the state of Florida. Huge win for Donald Trump. Donald Trump, while we project, will win in Kentucky with Indiana with its 11 electoral votes. West Virginia, Florida, Tennessee, Mississippi, South Carolina, Alabama, North Dakota uh, with its three electoral votes, and South Dakota, Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, the state of Montana, North Carolina, Georgia, That's Iowa, right. Utah. And Hillary got caught stealing at least five states. There were six electoral votes. One of the biggest landslide in history they hadn't stole. And Wyoming with its three electoral votes. Sorry to keep you waiting, complicated business. A lot of people have laughed at me over the years. Now they're not laughing so much, I'll tell you. That's right. I love how he's at those big press dinners over and over again on that video. Being laughed at, being made fun of, being told he's stupid. And he just sits there with total confidence. That's presidential. That's manly. I would give Donald Trump about a 99 performance rate right now. Uh, appointing Rents Priebus, the head of the Republican Party, who stabbed him, the, him in the back over and over again. I don't like it. But I trust Donald Trump. We'll see what he does. I care about his agenda. Now, he has Bannon, who is totally awake to what's happening over him as the chief counselor. So they do need to know, just like, you know, you want to hire the same janitor that's worked someplace for 20 years. If you buy some 20-story building, you want to know where everything's at, what's going on. If they just use Priebus for five, six months as a guide, which is a trend I've seen that Trump does, and then throw him overboard, that'll be another feather in Trump's cap. But I do not trust Priebus at all. He is a rhino, neocon, galactic-level weasel. And when I learned yesterday morning that that's who they were probably going to appoint, uh, I just obviously wasn't happy about it. That said, watching 60 Minutes last night, Trump knocked it out of the park. He said, oh, we're going to defend the Second Amendment, and we're going to uh, be pro-life, and we're going to build the wall, and we're going to cut the taxes. But there was one part that we're going to dig up and play where she says, your, your supporters are running around saying racist things and doing horrible racist things to Muslims and Mexicans. Are you going to apologize for that or are you going to stop it? And he says, yes, I wasn't aware of that, but I told my supporters, stop it, don't do it. I'm very surprised to hear that. I hate to hear that, Trump said. I would say, don't do it. It's terrible because I'm going to bring this country together, close quote. Ladies and gentlemen, the few people I've seen in his rallies that start screaming, Jew this, Jew that, or Mexican this, Mexican that, look mentally ill, or they look like agent provocateurs. And I personally have had pro-gun rallies 
where people show up in KKK outfits, and we later learn they were not KKK. They also caught, remember, uh, at uh, Rand Paul events, people dressed up in hayseed outfits, very racist, in, in overalls and stuff with red checkered shirts. And I said, those photos look fake. Let's do some Google searches. But I mean, by fake, it was like Halloween costumes to them. They weren't worn out overalls or coveralls and uh, 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 holding up signs saying, we hate Mexicans when he was running for the Senate. Folks searched it. Turned out it was Democratic Party actual operatives that work for the party. We also caught him doing the same thing in Houston, running around screaming, we hate black people, we hate N-words uh, a few years ago. This is, this is what they do. This is what they do. And so you see almost none of this happening. It's the mainstream media that is injecting race into everything 24-7, saying that this is a white lash over and over again. What's amazing, though, is that even Michael Moore has come out because he, he knows which side of the road victory's on and admitted that Hillary was disconnected from the people, admitted the Democratic Party needs to be basically totally reorganized, and went on to admit that the huge supermajority that elected Barack Obama, I mean, he got a huge mandate in 2008. Those same people are the folks that elected Donald Trump. In fact, the headline from Fox News, and it was a clip of him on MSNBC, was Michael Moore, Trump voters, not racist, same people that voted for Obama. And I was making that point last week. I'm glad now that's being picked up because how do you have this big majority of people, a large swath of them white Republicans that jump parties and vote for Obama to prove that they're not, quote, racist. Well, as I said in a tweet last night, now they voted for Donald Trump to prove they're not stupid because they took all the goodwill of this country to try to bring people together and tried to buffalo us into accepting Obamacare, open borders, globalism, one-sided jobs, you name it. In fact, the Washington Post admits it as well. How voters who heavily supported Obama switched over to Trump. Boom. Even the Washington Post. But notice how much more truthfulness there is now in MSM that Hillary's out. She was running the major newspapers. She was running the major TV networks. The Democratic Party was in total control with the major corporations behind them, and they control the executives. And if you strayed out of line one millimeter, you lost your job. Now they realize, A, Hillary's gone, but B, they've lost almost all credibility, and their profits are in free fall. The New York Times and other papers are down over 97% in the last quarter. Look it up. That is cardiac arrest politically, as I've said many times. Now, the good news is stock market is continuing to boom because people have exuberance over tax cuts that are coming. The communist Chinese have weighed in. They're trying to manipulate the stock market, promising a trade war uh, if Trump tries to have fair deals. Well, I mean, China, you got a currency 30-something percent below us, and it's not a trade war if we cut corporate taxes to match you so that maybe we get a few jobs. How about be fair? But you know what? You want a trade war, China? You are in much worse shape than we are. So if you want that war, throw us in that briar patch. There's CNBC. China fires its first warning shot. Warning iPhone sales will suffer if Trump starts a trade war. China, you got a one-sided deal. You got a whole bunch of generals and people that are billionaires. You're the supposed communist. You need to share the wealth in your economy. You need to pay people more. Now, I want to go out to break with this clip. Of all the celebrities that said they'd leave the country. Now they say they were just joking. No, get the hell out. I went back to Amy Schumer's videos and stuff. You weren't, you weren't, you were very serious. You said you were going to go to Spain. By the way, dumbass, Spain's like five times more right wing than we are right now. So also know what you're talking about. Let's go ahead and play that clip. If it isn't Hillary in November, does your act change? Does your outlook My change? act will change because I'll need to learn to speak Spanish because I will move to Spain or somewhere. <laughs> will Donald Trump be our next president? Oh. Oh, if that mother becomes president, I move my black ass to South Africa. And I need the coming to your country if you'll let me in or Canada. Uh, I already told you what I'm doing if he becomes president. I'm moving to Canada. Me and Drake gonna be neighbors in 
Donald Trump becomes president. Listen, if he wins, he won't have to go out worry about immigration. Well, I'll go back. Jeez, I might leave. Is that right? Yeah, I might. Where would you go? Canada. I've, I know everyone's always idly threatening this, but I'm 100% moving to Canada. I love Canada. And there's an area in Vancouver that I find beautiful and appealing, and I can conduct business from there. I'd be an expatriate. <laughs> Uh, I would I would definitely move. Trump rent win, I'm moving to Africa. If any Republican gets nominated, I'm gonna move to Canada with my entire family. No, I, I literally bought my ticket, You're I not swear. A citizen, you know, of Canada. It's okay, I'll make it. I'll make it. I'll okay. figure that out. I, I did buy a house in another country just in case. So all these people <laughs> that threaten that threaten to leave the country and you then actually, don't I will leave that country. Well, I would consider getting in a rocket. <laughs> and going to another planet. Good, go with share. For me to move. And what's you know? With all right, there's a lot more of these. It's up on Infowars.com right now. Uh, these people all think you're weak-minded. They want to use peer pressure on you to bully you into not supporting a nationalist. Well, guess what? It blew up in your face, bullies. We'll be back. So, what we've seen happen in the last six days. You fool me with. Tomorrow it'll be one week is a total collapse of a giant con artist facade. And if you're a new listener, you may have missed it, but this is something I talk about like a broken record because it's absolutely paramount in our fight. It's all a con game facade. Globalism, the New World Order, all of it is admittedly to make you poor and stupid. It's a very cold-blooded, psychopathic system that engages in total divide and conquer and a move to deindustrialize populations so you can dictate their surrender. And when they all sit up there on every news channel and tell you at every comedy show, at every movie, with product placement and propaganda placement and behavior placement, telling you that you can't have someone and that they're racist and that you're racist and that Obamacare's free when it's not, when that facade fell, it was irrevocably damaging. But what is that media combine doing? They are trying to reorganize and actually double down predominantly with the same, anyone that doesn't do what we say is a racist. That's all they've got. Now, that only works on the weakest-minded people. And I want to tell you something now that I've got to get on video. Just like we told you last week, we saw huge buses, folks trying to get home, pulling in to drop off the... 5,000 or so people that demonstrated and tore stuff up in downtown Austin. For whatever reason, we didn't get video of that, but my crew saw it. I saw the buses, but didn't know there was a big rally uh, going on. And they were all over. I mean, like 90 of them is what it looks like. We have since then gotten footage of them doing it yet again. And I'm talking about mile after mile of buses pulling in for people to run around and riot. Now, footage is coming in from Chicago and other areas of the exact same thing. All I knew last Wednesday was I was at a traffic jam trying to go home and see my kids when I went off the air at like 5 o'clock. I saw the buses. And man, when you see the people in these videos we have up on Infowars.com, Drudge has them as well at DrudgeReport.com, they look like they've just been robbed or something. I mean, they look like they're angry, they're upset, they're confused. And this is the new possession to a trendy. I don't care what color they are, they have the exact same look on their face. That being wronged, being a victim, is like winning the Super Bowl. And then being in these collective cry parties, that they admit they have cry parties at the University of Texas in Austin. They have cry parties, they put out emails, and people show up and cry. You've seen the videos around the nation, not just on election night, but for days after. I later then learned from employers that I know, crew members I know, and even people I know. Because we're so inclusive, we even hire some folks that don't agree with us. That even one person that works for me took off a few days last week and actually cited they were too upset by the Trump victory. Yes, you heard me right. So that's where America has gotten, ladies and gentlemen, that people literally believe Adolf Hitler has been elected. None of it's true. And imagine the mind control that people are under. Imagine the ignorance where they really think that Donald Trump 
He's going to do all these horrible things, start World War III, deport all the Mexicans, on and on and on. It's just like in North Korea when Kim Jong-un died, or, or Kim Jong-il, his father, and the, and, and the two days of crying. And if you didn't cry enough, and if you didn't freak out enough, you got thrown out. In fact, that's a genius idea. Let's take this video. It's going to go viral right now. I want it out in the next hour. It's so huge. Let's take this video of North Koreans crying when Kim Jong-un died. Let's show an image of him and the newspaper headlines. Then let's cut and mix in the videos of people crying and screaming and begging that we have. And then let's cut it in to the celebrity saying they're going to leave and freaking out. Like, let's hear some of this audio right now. This is actually going on all over the United States. We don't we don't have the audio. We always have the audio. This is hilarious. We'll just we'll just Google. Um, we'll we'll pull it up after the break. Uh, North Koreans cry when Kim Jong Il dies, and we and, just, ah, 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 and and it's all for group consumption. It's all just part of the mass authoritarianism. And then you study the so-called left. They want to shut down words. They want communism. They want socialism. They want collective. These people are the ultimate followers. And their whole image of how they're good and they're winners and they're living vicariously through the state and through the media, that's their friend. They don't have husbands, they don't have wives, they don't have families anymore. They just have the state and the state-run media. And when it's proven wrong, their whole universe comes crashing down. Uh, we're going to look at how uh, Americans responded to crybabies uh, last week and this week still freaking out, crying in the streets compared to what happened in North Korea in just a moment. And then the most arrogant of the Hollywood stars saying Trump will never be president, George Clooney, that uh, I made a big deal about a few months ago because he's so foppish, he's so fake, he's such a joke that he has to look at his lines. He can't even say Trump's a racist, he won't be president without reading lines that are printed on paper in front of him. Amy Schumer, George Clooney, Matt Damon, all these people are beyond teleprompter readers. They are empty, nothing husks that live in filthy rich palaces and fly around on jet airplanes telling you you can't have prosperity. They are the most horrible, degenerate monsters on the earth. And they support total totalitarianism. And I will never see any of their films or works again. I am done. Total break with these people. Do not see their films. Do not support them. And when you see them, spit on their images. We have to totally break with these people. All the fake intellectuals, all the tyrants, they want a tyranny in this country. And they want to tell us that trying to restore our republic's a tyranny. And that's why they've got a week of demonstrators out there saying rape Donald Trump's wife and, and saying kill the Trumps and burning stuff down and all this is because they want to make Trump look like an authoritarian. 66 days before he's even in office, because God forbid he cuts the taxes of people making $40,000 down to zero, and their lives get a lot better, and they go, thank you, Donald Trump. Free market made our life better, not big government. That's the American system. They'll have to compete with that, and they can't compete with that, and then what will Hollywood do? Hollywood thinks it's broken America's back. It's in the process of selling out to the communist Chinese. I told you that a few years ago. Now, the Chinese government laughs and says, we own your de debt. We already control much of Hollywood. We're taking over all six studios right now. Every movie I see that's science-based or, or a science fiction movie, the Chinese save the world. Now, I keep telling you this for years. I went and saw Arrival. It's a good film. But the communist Chinese save everyone. They save the earth. The Martian, they save the earth. Every movie I see, that is a tale. People say, what are you, anti-Chinese? Folks, we don't run the state-run media in China. We don't run their Hollywood either. If every movie you see, the Saudi Arabians are the heroes, you know you're being run by Saudi Arabia. It's so un-American. We already have anti-gun, anti-family propaganda. I have nothing against the Chinese people themselves. And I'm not going to sit here and play race cards because it's not even about race. The Chinese and the Koreans hate each other more than anybody. The Japanese and the, and the Chinese hate each other. They're, it's like Sunni versus Shiite. They hate each other. But the public here is just ignorant. Where if you say communist China has mobile execution vans and kills Falun Gong demonstrators, they say, what are you, anti-Chinese? I'm not going to play race cards here. But I will. My sister's Korean adopted. I'm not against Asian people. But I shouldn't have to sit there and say it. I shouldn't have to say my dad's dad fought the KKK for anti 
uh, uh, you know, uh, all their uh, anti-desegregation moves uh, and was, you know, a, a pillar of the community. Uh, when I was a kid, I was growing up, black people constantly brought pies and cakes and stuff to the house, just, just worshiping my grandparents. I sit there and tell all you scumbag, fake, liberal race baiters that because you are modern KKK. I, you don't deserve for me to sit here and say to you how good I am and how good my family is. Like when you called Charlton Heston a racist, he was called that on TV and in press conferences, he wouldn't even respond. When he was in the civil rights movement for a decade before it was cool, you people are crap on the ground. You are the race baiters. You're the modern version of the KKK using race for politics and then blaming good Americans that want prosperity and unity as being racist. You're scum. The Communist Chinese are the number one authoritarian power in the world. They're merging with our elite. As I've told everyone, the plan is to merge us with China, not Russia. That's why Russia is being kicked upside the head over and over again. Because it's meant to be brought down because it won't go along with this deal. That's why Trump's been advised by our generals that are pro-America not to have a war with Russia, but China's the issue. And by the way, we've been having denial of service attacks for a week from China, 24-7. Our servers are so giant they can handle it, but that's one reason. Everyone needs to go and buy the books, the videos, the water filters, the nutraceuticals, the products at InfoWarsStore.com. Because a lot of our bandwidth costs are the ongoing cyber attacks. I'd say sometimes half of half of the bandwidth we're paying for is just massive attacks. Uh, but that's okay. You guys always come through. Uh, by the way, it was supposed to end yesterday, and this happens all the time. I just don't extend this by accident. It was supposed to end uh, this morning. It's still up, so it's going to end any minute. Uh, free shipping store-wide, InfoWarsStore.com, or call toll-free 888-253-3139, 30% off. And by the way, if they've already pulled the specials off the cart, but that's up there, we're going to keep it another day because of this. Anyways, Defense of Liberty special. Extended, 30% off Super Mel Vitality, 30% off Survival Shield X2, 30% off DNA Force. InfoWarsLife.com is the nutraceutical site, or simply call toll-free 888-253-3139. We'll honor that special. Uh, our screw-ups, your gain. 30% off DNA Force and a bunch of other products. Some of the water filters have sold out. Some of the are still there. Also, we have a lost leader. Get the InfoWars Trump is my president shirt for just $9.95. While supplies last, it is a limited edition. We're coming up with a new design. Take a stand against the establishment. Show your support for President-elect Donald Trump. With InfoWars Trump is my president t-shirt for just $9.95. There's no question the globals will try to take out Trump. They got a big petition to not honor the Electoral College right now. And stop the Liberty Movement before his inauguration. And now is the time to show your support. We will have to take this sale down very, very soon because it's a lost leader and we're not reprinting the shirt. So please take advantage of it. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and get your Trump is my president shirt, the lost leader special. Also, introducing BioPCA, the ultimate new hair, skin, and nails formula by InfoWars Life. For years, listeners have been asking us to create a game-changing formula that works to give your hair, skin, and nails the compounds they really need. No matter how hard we try, every single day we expose ourselves to toxic chemicals that are wreaking havoc on our skin and hair. From toxic chemicals in the tap water that are released in the shower to synthetic garbage and most leading shampoos and body wash. Now it's time to start fighting back against this attack and give your body what it needs. BioPCA is specifically formulated by our team of chemists and scientists to help you give your skin and hair and nails a healthy appearance and fight back against our toxic environment. With 14 powerful ingredients, including biotin, zinc, and the proprietary blend of enzymes and collagen, this formula is the real deal. Try your bottle of BioPCA today at InfoWarsLife.com and see what it does for yourself. This is a limited first run, and we do expect to run out of inventory very, very soon. InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. And BioPCA, folks, one of the ingredients in it, we showed you this when Anthony was in here a few weeks ago when we first launched it, one of the ingredients, and we'll put it up on screen how much it costs for folks, when you click on it and read about it, one of the ingredients in it, and it's nineteen ninety five, discounted out of the gates, was $44 in a leading competitor and wasn't even the same dose, and ours is more organic and higher quality. Just one, I mean, it, it, look, look, these people are ripping you off, putting it in fancy packaging, and charging you $44, it's a leading brand, 
for one compound we have at a lesser level. It's a total joke. We take it all, put it in there. Happens to be these are inexpensive ingredients, so we can sell it for super inexpensive and blow away the competition and dominate. Infowarslife.com. Infowarsstore.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139. Your purchase makes it all possible. And finally, I'm going to say this. I cut liners for 10 new stations just this weekend that we've gotten the last week and a half. Last time I checked, we were above 230 affiliates. That would mean 240. The broadcast is exploding. I never went above 180 or so. Stations always sell or change formats. So we're always hovering the same place. And I'm talking about for a decade. We've broken through. People now get it. They understand we were right all along. It, quite frankly, is our world. It is our oyster. Now, we've still got pitfalls, and we're still somewhat behind, but we have the initiative. We're gaining ground very, very quickly, but it is essential that if you're listening to us on the AM or FM station, the globalists are admittedly trying to bankrupt talk radio. They're coming after independent media. It is essential to not just spread the word about this local station, but to become a sponsor or a supporter of the sponsors to bare minimum, send them 20 bucks. If, you, if you're poor, I understand, spread the word. That is the most valuable thing you can do and contribute. Whether you're rich or poor or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. You, your wealth is your free speech. Spread the word about the station. But if you're middle class or have money, this is a war. And putting money into it helps us win. The stations don't ask for this. I'm telling you. Your local church, are they fighting this? Probably not. You should tithe to the local station. At least part of your tithe. I mean, that's, it's really important. This is an information war. We owe all of our success to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I'm just telling you, supporting those affiliates is critical. Just as important as supporting us. All right. Let me get into the other news here. So, the talking point is Donald Trump's a racist. He must step down. We're going to riot. We're going to have the biggest organized George Soros operation in history. They're saying uh, we're going to come after Donald Trump's what they're pushing. And they're saying they're going to try to shut down and basically burn D.C. during the inauguration. The Trump camp has come out rightfully and said... It's time for Harry Reid and MoveOn.org and George Soros and Hillary Clinton to stop it. There are buses all over the country with your groups bringing people in. We know you're behind it. We know you're organizing it. Stop it right now. If people want to protest organically. That's their issue. But you're the party out of power. They used every dirty trick you could. You stole five states. You need to stop. And so what they're saying is Trump campaign manager. Democrats need to tell paid violent protesters to stop. I hope President Obama calls Harry Reid today and says, cut it out. And that is exactly what's happening in a big, big way. And they hit us with everything they had, but it still failed. Here's another article. Blocks of anti-Trump protest buses caught on tape. We have visual confirmation of how a substantial portion of those professional paid protesters arrived at the site of the protest. In this case, Chicago, Zero Hedge. It's also up on Drudge and InfoWars. You need to get that out to everybody you know. Continuing, protesters rape Melania sign draws strong rebuke, sparks Twitter trend. And this is the, the this is the scumminess of these people that you know they hire mentally ill people, homeless. It all came out in the WikiLeaks, and they're just angry, weird folks. But then you also have a lot of disenfranchised women who are 35, 40 years old. They're totally panicked. There's no man. They don't know why the state was supposed to deliver. They were taught to hate men. They were taught to hate prosperity. They were taught they were the boss. They were in charge. Don't work with anybody, just, just be in control. And now they're scared. And they really are panicking, thinking they're, because their power was that they had the president. Even though the president was screwing them over. Their power was a woman's about to be president, as if that meant anything. Their power was fraud. So now their, their imaginary power has been totally removed from them. And we see the most rampant hatred and actual misogyny is reserved for conservative Republican women. But it's okay when the the young turds say, I'm a big fat person when I'm not really even fat. And then say, you disgusting person, when she's all about arresting whoever, you know, fat shames or whatever. It's okay to say rape Melania. It's okay to uh, have attacks all over the country against white people and to have those attacks promoted. And, and there's even cases in Europe if you have blonde hair and blue eyes, you get beat up, they say, because you look like Trump. This is classic psychology, classic mob psychology, classic race mob uh, psychology. Many Twitter users 
who saw the right millennia was trending, criticized the technology giant for not removing it. CBS, again, withholds Trump anti-violence soundbite for two days. They had this for days when he was calling for no violence on the other side because they wanted to keep it going. Again, Muslims brutally beat TV chef because he, quote, looked like Mr. Trump, broke his nose, you name it, and screamed, you look like Trump. You know, three guys try to beat me up. I just don't get it why why I watch all these folks getting attacked by, by folks and, and they don't tear people's heads off. I never thought I was tough. I, I just I just don't get it. I mean, I, I, I just don't get it. I just, Anders Vindel, a famous chef, restaurant owner, and TV star, Sweden, was savagely beaten by three Muslim men because they thought he looked like Mr. Trump, and then it went over what they did to him. And, of course, Sweden's just overrun, total open borders, all the jihadis pouring in. There's another one I'm going to play later. Shock video. Mom psychologically abuses her brave son for voting Trump in mock election. So they have a mock election, and then the mother finds out about it happening in school. So she blows at him and says, get out of my house, and terrorizes him and says, you're not going to live here. This is a woman wedded to the state. I bet you money there's not a dad in the house. Her husband is TV and the state and lying, talking heads she's formed a relationship with. This is mind control. Meanwhile, Dave Chappelle has actually been listening to what Trump's pushing. Massive tax cuts, massive reindustrialization, focusing to put it in urban and black areas. And by the way, Trump really will try to deliver unless you block his program. Saying, man, we got to give this guy a chance. And of course, he's being criticized for that. Meanwhile, the stock market, again, last time I checked a little while ago, is way up again. And analysts say Trump's stock rally could persist. There's a lot of expectations built into this rally. In a controlled economy, they keep taxes high. Now, since I mentioned it, I want to play a clip of George Clooney a few months ago saying, listen, Trump will never be president. This is his arrogance where he dictates reality. He tells you what's going to happen. Those of us that aren't weak-minded understood the demographics. They understood that poor people across the board were deindustrialized. We understood the landslide for Obama would go for Trump because he says he's populist. So did, so did Obama. The lesson is Trump better deliver or he'll end up with a destroyed legacy like Obama. Trump's legacy could be saving the republic and riding this nation. But he's got to decide whether he's going to do that or not. And we've got to decide to give him the support he needs and not abandon him early so that he is able to get his agenda through. By the way, I talked to the president-elect at length on Friday. I talked about it on Friday. I talked about it on Sunday. No media coverage. Normally, I mention something I talked to Trump about. It's in 100 newspapers. Notice they don't want to talk about it now because they thought I was reducing credibility from Trump instead of adding credibility. Now they're in horror. We got the Washington Post, New York Times, you name it, calling. Wanting you know what's really going on because you understand... What you think discredits someone is what holds them up. The establishment's over. So all you were doing was building info wars and building Trump through your arrogance. Just like they say in the WikiLeaks, oh, it's okay. Trump will be defeated. He's, he's a clown. People want something that's real. They want something off the hip. They don't want teleprompter. Haven't you figured that out yet? You have a 6% trust rate. Six percent. So you sit here and look at me when we've got like an 87 percent rate. I mean, on YouTube, it's like 97. And you look at us when, when well, everything we've talked about has come true. Everything you say is a big fat lie. We have the emails where you admit you're liars, colluding to hurt us and rob us. You're done. And if Trump presses that, they're over. They're over. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. We're now just six days, seven days after the historic election, and there are still crying parties, riots, racial attacks, rape Melania signs. Uh, George Soros and others are organizing the biggest demonstration ever, they're saying, in 65 days for the inauguration. Completely authoritarian, just like they cry and scream whenever their dear leader, Kim Jong-il, died a few years ago in North Korea. And then we will continue. Okay, let's let's watch that one more time because we have some other footage of them, young children and others in front of idols uh, of the leader crying and begging. But let's see that clip one more time. This is 
This is what America is turning into, where their entire identity is in this leader, Hillary Clinton, who destabilized countries, who robbed the poor, who stole her nomination, who engaged in every crime under the sun. But it's, it's okay because their identity is in her. She's their mommy. She's the reason they have personal strength. She's their cult leader. And there needs to be a call to action, and I need Hillary to stand up right now and walk in and sue the United States of America and say, back when black people couldn't, right, they couldn't vote, right? How many years ago, your vote would have been one third? Guess what? Today, it still is. Today, right now, it still is. That's CNN and a fake report. That was a fake reporter. A fake person on the street that got caught. I'm our leader. Don't let Trump cut our taxes to zero. No, don't let him give us our money. The president elect. Lee, reject. And Americans at all these rallies have red hammer and sickles. They want to live in North Korea. Sexist, homophobic things that he has said at the election and he has continued to say. There's not going to be a President Donald Trump. Um, that's not going to happen. Uh, and it's not going to happen because we're not going to be used. Fear is not going to be something that we're going to, uh, that's going to be uh, the, what drives our country. That particular shot's good, but the, the shot we played six months ago when he said it is a wide shot. And you can see him look down at his paper that has writing on it to go over his notes. That's how pathetic these people are. And in the full clip, he goes on and on and on. I mean, it is so absolutely, totally disgusting how they all sat there with a straight face and told you, you can't have Donald Trump. No one is supporting him. Like you're totally in group think, well, if everybody else is against him, I better be for him. And then when he was 20 points ahead after the RNC, he was only 10 points ahead before that. Oh my God, they started adding 10, 15, 20, 30 more points for Hillary. And even telling you in the poll that it was a fraud. And I have all these pundits calling me saying, how did you know Trump would win? How are you so sure? And I keep saying, the pollsters lied. And what's the headlines? The pollsters are totally discredited, bipartisan. They're discredited. Why would they bipartisanly do that? Because they work for the same globalists that have hijacked the country. Now, always informative, Stefan Molitor is going to be joining us. We'll take calls in the second half of the interview. And then... Mr. Bracken, the former Navy SEAL expert on how they're trying to destabilize things, is going to pop in. And then always, with a lot of key intel, Roger Stone, who's been spending a lot of time with Donald Trump in the last few days, will be joining us to talk about all things in Planet Trump. Stay with us. I'm Alex Jones. I got a few of these clips I want to play ahead of Stefan Molyneux joining us, where Sanders says, Comey did not cost Clinton the election. People don't think the Democratic Party is standing with them. Well, yeah, they stole the nomination from you, and then you rolled over and let them steal it, so you're just as bad, or, or maybe even worse, Sanders, but here's the deal. Hillary Clinton was an evil person. Americans found out about that. Blue-collar workers, but also skilled workers and others from the Rust Belt are who gave Trump this victory overall, and the Midwest. They call that red country, oh, white lash, but... Those are the same whites that put Barack Obama in. The same areas that went predominantly for Obama are hitting the reset button. They're hitting the, 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 the desperation button that will this elite just stop running an economy that's so consolidated, so monopoly based that we can get some of the crumbs. And I believe that Donald Trump, from his past history being against NAFTA and GATT and other things, and what he's been through with these people wants to try to deliver that. Now, it was uh, Kent who's writing an article pointing out that Louis XIV, I remember reading about this, would appoint his enemies once he took over to key positions in Versailles. They're at the palace outside Paris, or in Paris. They would, they would appoint people so he could keep a very close eye on them and also control them. Some of the French emperors did that as well. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt because he's appointing some patriots, 
some hardcore patriots. I mean, Stephen Bannon of Breitbart is about as hardcore as I am. Anti-New World Order, globalism, world government. Uh, I mean, he's against it all. Pro-gun, national sovereignty. He's hardcore. That is the chief advisor to the president and will tell Rents Priebus what to do. But still, I just don't trust Priebus. And what I've seen Trump do is he'll use somebody as a guide inside a system when he, say, charges into a goblin's nest. But he's not kissing goblins. He's not, you know, in bed with a goblin. And, of course, that's the joke I made months ago. If he gets into office, it's one thing if he uses people who are in the system to get things done, to know who to call, to know how the nuts and bolts of the biggest government in the world works. But if he starts going along with their policies, I'm going to get very, very upset. But we're not even to that point yet. The elite are very, very upset at Trump because just exposing globalism and how it really works is coffin nails to it. And his discrediting of the whole media system. Let's savor this giant victory for the liberty movement. And then if Trump doesn't totally deliver, down the road, we get people even better. In fact, I have the numbers here. We're talking about when we come back. They lost the Senate even more. They lost the House more. They lost, what, 12 governors. It was 16, I'm going from memory. It was a devastating victory. And so Roger Stone's right when he said the day after the election, Alex, savor this a bit. Enjoy yourself a little bit. Because this is huge. There's no way his Supreme Court justices will be anywhere near as bad as Hillary. I'm worried because the federal judges at the high levels are just so globalist. I want to see Andrew Napolitano. In fact, I'm going to nominate him right now. And I know inside baseball, he was told a year ago, face to face by Donald Trump, that you're on my short list to be chief justice. Whatever that means. So notice now, though, before I'd say something about Trump, it'd be big news because they know I'm talking to him. Now that he's the president, they just can't even they can't even deal with it. They can't even stand it. What does that tell you about Trump? That, I mean, I had a you know, lengthy conversation with him Friday. <laughs> I'm not even bragging about that. But I do kind of pinch myself. I'm not the establishment, but let me tell you, we're making a good damn run at it. <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> Infowars becomes the establishment. You better get ready because <laughs> we're going to be so damn free it's going to make your head spin. <laughs> We've come a long way. So everybody should be really excited. I'm finally having that euphoria. James O'Keefe was going to be on in the next hour today, but he is under the weather, understandably. He's been fighting so hard. He'll be joining us the next few days. We're having a victory lap uh, from all the folks that we've had on who have been saying that Trump was going to win when the controlled corporate media was saying he was going to lose. And I've been making the point that people's identity in cults, North Korea, authoritarian fascist systems, that when the cult leader finally starts falling, they commit suicide in mass, they cry, they scream, just like we saw for three days after Kim Jong-un died in North Korea. This is a horrible, demonic, hereditary dictator. Uh, they couldn't even produce automobiles, electricity. Tens of millions have starved to death. Their population's gone down by 30% since they became communist uh, back in the 40s. Every other nation, populations go up, not, not in North Korea. South Korea is about to surpass China for industrial output. Their people are fabulously wealthy because they have a little bit of freedom compared to North Korea. But it doesn't matter. I have been caught in two different traffic jams last Wednesday and Friday that go on from 3 in the afternoon until 10 at night with more than 5,000 one day and 10,000 another day estimated breaking windows, police cars, attacking businesses, beating people up, threatening to attack our camera people, and screaming, you're not allowed to be here uh, at our crew screaming, you're white, you're a racist. And yes, in some cases, it's white people saying that with red flags, with hammers and sickles. These are people who live in a fantasy land and their God has fallen. Now, think about who their God was. You couldn't be more corporate. You couldn't be more warmonger. You couldn't be more establishment. You couldn't be more fascistic. In her internal speeches to Goldman Sachs and others, it was totally fascist. At least with Sanders, he was a socialist. They stole it from him. But you don't care. You want to just run around and say everyone's racist. But strangely enough, even Bernie Sanders, who used the race card and said, if you're white, you don't know what it's like to be poor. Remember that? 
He now admits, no, it was blue-collar people across the board and others sick of losing their jobs, sick of being screwed over, sick of high taxes. Donald Trump's own tax plan, under $40,000 a year, zero tax, which makes perfect sense because you still got property tax and sales tax and state income tax, blah, 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 blah. But that's going to cut your taxes a good 20%. The next tax bracket, a 30% cut, which is only but 10 points or so. And then it goes on. Corporate tax with the highest in the world, written by the corporations to make us move to China. This is simple. You want to bring it back, cut it 10 points to China's. Or how about 15? Oh, they're threatening trade war. Okay, just cut it to 10. What are you going to do? Hey, same tax as you. That's not a war. It's a level playing field. You want jobs. This is how it's done. Communism, socialism, crony capitalism doesn't deliver. This was a vote against that. The same white people that voted in droves, the demographics are there, to elect Obama in a huge landslide are the ones that voted for Trump. Now, even Michael Moore sees which way the wind's blowing and came out and admitted this over the weekend. The problem is the George Soros people, the Democrats, they've been caught in Austin and in Chicago and other areas. I have seen it myself where what is going on? And you see like 100 buses turning off the highway. And then I later learned they went downtown. Now it's confirmed zero hedge is being funded by moveon.org. Outrageous to then say to Trump on well, 60 Minutes last night, we're going to play the clip coming up. Your people are out doing racist things. Your, your people are out attacking folks. Are you going to tell them to stop? Well, if they are, that's terrible. Yes, stop. Oh, Trump apologizes. No, Trump's trying to defuse, trying to be presidential. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this is, the, this is outrageous. 99% of the racial attacks are against Trump supporters. Blonde hair, blue eyed people are being attacked everywhere, being told, you look like Trump. This is the most, they're saying rape Melania is a meme with signs all over the country, the most misogynistic crap. This is what the establishment's done. They know race based garbage is the most gutter level tribal crap there is. And so the Western world phases it out. We change it. We're the group that did more than anybody push that garbage out and make it about what you stand for, what you produce. And now, the establishment doubles back with the new populations we brought in, in class envy, and mixes it with racism to try to bring the nation down. And this is a repudiation. And the great news is, and what has them scared, record number of black Americans, record number of Hispanic Americans, and Asian Americans voted for Donald J. Trump as a repudiation. And that's why they're crap in their drawers. It's why they funded minorities to go to the Trump rallies and scream racism was so that minorities don't feel welcome. Something started happening. Libertarians, patriots went out and got folks and said, come with me. They got hugged. They got love. They came together. A lot of times people said, hey, what business are you in? I've talked to folks here in Austin. I'm in this, but we want to hire you. Come work with us. People want you to cross those lines. Ideology is thicker than blood, folks. You understand that? Now, I know that historically. The renaissance is here if you just take it. They're trying to blow it up because they can't. The big corporations don't want to compete. With an open free market. Now, that's my rant. He's with us for the rest of the hour. Stefan Molyneux of FreedomainRadio.com is joining us. And he's here to break down the situation, what we're facing, the different attack plans. Uh, but first off, I am now officially euphoric. I mean, uh, tell it, uh, I mean, in your expert view, what have we seen? The facade completely dropped? Operation Toto complete? Or, or how much of the battle have we won? I mean, who are the winners? Who are the losers? Well, it's uh, first of all, I just wanted to say uh, congratulations to you, Alex, to the entire InfoWars team, to Paul Joseph Watson and others. World War Three canceled on account of InfoWars, and that is a pretty good thing. You know, when we talked earlier this year, I said this was the year I felt my whole life had prepared me for, for this kind of combat, for this kind of battle. And maybe you feel the same way, but I just really wanted to extend heartfelt admiration and congratulations for the role that you have played personally and through your organization and through your affiliates in saving Western civilization. Let's take a bow, shall we? Because we have done some great work this year. Well, my friend, congratulations to you as well. I mean, clearly they wanted to start World War III, but as Putin said in his congratulations last Wednesday, we know this will not be easy. We should probably talk about why some of the forces in our government want this, but uh, you've got so many great points. Where should we start first? 
Well, I think the first thing we want to remember, Alex, is that the media has not changed. The media has learned nothing. The media will, will not do any U-turns. They will not uh, process anything about how wrong they were, about how misleading they were, about how manipulative they were. And therefore, every time you see Trump in contact with the mainstream media, view it as a kind of psyop. View it as a way to depress you. View it as a way to alienate you from your candidate. View, you, view, uh, view it as a way to set you against Donald Trump. Like I sat down and watched Grit my teeth, put on my crash helmet and, and watched the 60 Minutes interview. And it was just a whole series of brain dead gotcha questions. Do you disavow the violence being committed in your name? It's like, how do we even know this could all be false flag stuff? I mean, Lord knows it's been that way in the past. And a lot of these supposed hate crimes have been revealed as hoaxes. Or, and, and so do you disavow this? Are you going to go back on your promises? As well, the media, first of all, they said he didn't have any policy platforms. He didn't have any policies. And now they're saying, are you going to repudiate them? And this is all nonsense. It's designed to free could cause people who supported Trump to freak out, to second guess him, to start arm check. That's right. And for a year, Stefan, they said he didn't have any policies. They were always there on the site. We covered it. We read it. And then they say, oh, you're not going to deport everybody now. Like you said, and he goes, I never said that. I said, if you're a felon and we catch you doing something, you're going to be deported. And everybody else are illegal who will have to have a process to go out and then come back in if they're not criminals, which ought to actually concern some folks. I think we have too much immigration. I was saying he's more liberal than a lot of Republicans, but he actually wants a system so they're not underground, undocumented, permanent underclass that the Democrats basically milk and control. Then they go on and say, so so here's what they claim, he said. Then he doesn't do what they claim. He, he does what he says he would do, and they say it's a lie. Well, here's the thing. I mean, if you know anything about Donald Trump, he's not that enigmatic. You just read the art of the deal, read some of the other books that he's and hear what he said. He doesn't like to box himself in by jumping to conclusions. And that's a great gotcha game. Because at this point, you know, he's not the president yet. It's still months away. So they're going to say, well, how are you going to deal with this? And how are you going to deal with that? Now, events could change. Information could change. And of course, he's privy to a lot of information now that he wasn't privy to just uh, last week. I mean, he's obviously had his security briefings. He's up to speed on things. I guess he's got the same amount of information information that most of the foreign governments who seem to have gone fishing through Hillary Clinton's server now have. So it's nice to have him up to speed with some of the other governments that know all of the stuff about American security. But he's not president yet. He's not going to box himself in. He's always said, I don't like people who reveal all their plans ahead of time because it gives your enemies time to organize. It gives them a sense of where you're going. So the fact that he's hedging his bets, that he's not coming to conclusions is entirely in line with everything he said throughout his entire campaign and his entire career. What do you think of the conciliatory tone he's been striking that's been met, as you said, with hissing hatred from the media who seems to have only intensified what got them to this totally discredited position? Well, that's a great question, and I'm ambivalent about it. So I'll just give you sort of the very briefly the two sides of the argument. Number one is I'm a theoretician, like I'm a moral philosopher, and so I get to deal with perfection. I get to deal with abstracts and ideals. When you get into politics, it's been called for many centuries the art of the possible. You have to make compromises, even if you've got the House uh, and even if you've got the Senate. They still have enough uh, in, in the Dems still have enough in the Senate to do a filibuster. So you have to make compromises. You have to make compromises with the existing. Uh, rhino structure. And so I can sit here armchair quarterback and cry purity until the day I die. But the reality is I'm not actually out there trying to achieve legislative changes in politics, which is a unpleasant and messy thing, as uh, I think it was Bismarck in the 19th century in Germany who said there are two things the public should never, ever see being made. Number one, sausages. Number two, laws. It's a messy, difficult business. So, um, you know, the compromises, I don't know the degree to which they're necessary. He's had a chance to study this for a long time. He's got access to information. I'll never have a hold of. And he has to know where his compromises are. But the man's had a multi-decade career of getting incredible things done, of picking the right team, of executing, of delivering. At some point, hasn't the person doesn't the person have enough credibility that you're just going to trust what they're going to do until you see something wildly egregious? And I certainly haven't seen anything like that yet. Well, I was about to say uh, there were there were French uh, governors and, and, and you know, like Louis the Fourteenth was one point. Kit Daniels was pointing. I do an article on it right now. There were Chinese emperors. I mean, there's one form of governing where you actually take your enemies and you stick them in positions of power to basically fight with each other now. But you divide up that camp. Uh, quite frankly, somebody else did that. His name was Adolf Hitler. I'm not saying that's a very good way to govern. I know it works sometimes. And then you can, uh, at an executive level, control what they're doing. Obviously, Rince Priebus knows how to basically unlock all the doors. He knows the players. He knows how to get stuff done. He's such a backstabber. I don't trust him. The fact that Stephen Bannon is in charge of him 
uh, as the main presidential advisor, kind of putting out what the policy will be with Trump and then telling Priebus to follow it. I mean, I think that's good, but Priebus is such a butt boy, to use a, a, you know, a vernacular, of Paul Ryan, who is the biggest snake in Washington, other than maybe Harry Reid, uh, doesn't look good. But look, I'm going to give Trump the benefit of the doubt. Uh, he has pledged, though, that obviously the president doesn't prosecute, but that they would get out of the way with an attorney general for justice to be done. Now, I talked to him about that on Friday. That's private. I'm going to leave that at that. But he said in the 60 Minutes piece that, look, I want to focus on making the country successful. I want to move forward. I get not opening old wounds, but at the same time, he's got to do what he's got to do. I mean, I think the biggest litmus test for this, uh, to, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, he's got to appoint really good constitutional judges, uh, not just obviously the Supreme Court, but other federal uh, uh, appointees. And we're going to have those popping up in just a few months. He'll be in in 66 days. And there's a bunch of resets, appointment stuff that are just waiting that have been held up. That'll be the first big litmus, judges. Uh, pushing tax cuts, uh, pushing uh, sovereignty, defense of the border, uh, all this free welfare for illegals and stuff has got to be curtailed. Uh, and then also, it really is a good attorney general uh, that uh, goes after uh, the Clintons and the whole Soros crime network because they're never going to stop coming after Trump. Look what they're doing right now uh, until he does that. So uh, then, then going after them also puts them on the defense instead of them always trying to shut down the beachhead we have to restore uh, the Western world. Well, of course, when you're looking at a magician and he is kind of a master wizard of uh, organization, you don't look at the hand that has the dove in it. You look at the other hand because that's where the magic is going on. So for me, uh, bringing Renz in, okay, so he, he's got Bannon to countervail that and so on. And he needs all of the allegiances and alliances and knowledge of working with the rhinos that Renz is going to bring. But what it does, which I don't think people are commenting on enough, is it opens up who's going to be head of the RNC. Now, of course, if Trump is going to have some say, I assume he will, in who gets to be head of the RNC, well, I would bring Renz closer and then I would appoint somebody who would be uh, more along my particular ideological bent as head of the RNC. And that's, to me, a beautiful thing. You've got this guy in, he's going to bring all his loyalties, but you get to appoint someone else more in line with your thinking as head of the uh, RNC. And uh, I think that's a wonderful approach. So and, keep uh, your friends close and your enemies closer. Right, right. And so I think that uh, we, we, we have to remember that he's done some fantastic things long before he's even gotten into power. I mean, Canada and Mexico are, are opening up renegotiations with NAFTA. Thank heaven the Rust Belt might resurrect itself and come back like a phoenix from the ashes of bad trade deals. Russia's interested in normalizing relationships. The head of Syria wants to work with him. Uh, with Russia in Syria and, and in other places in the Middle East, you're going to have a much more effective ally against ISIS, which is what uh, Trump has wanted to do. I mean, the man has uh, been uh, president-elect for a couple of days, and already the world is settled, settling into a more rational pattern. No, you're right. I mean, it's a new day. I saw you kind of sing part of that song on your own show. It's a new world for me. Uh, it certainly is beautiful, and that's why the establishment is so upset about Trump, is because from day one, he's calling the shots. I happen to know for a fact from people that are close to him, he is working 20, I actually worry about him at 70. He's such a, such a Trojan, such a Herculean. 20 hours a day and when i talk to him and i'm not name dropping it just shows what he does on friday for i mean lengthy conversation less than 10 minutes but it was almost 10 minutes long he it was a real conversation he wasn't just patting me on the back he had real questions i had real comments i had real things i was saying and he and i said you know i said sir you're so busy you probably have to go and you go, yeah i am pretty busy he started telling me you're the 61st call i'm making today to thank <laughs> folks but i'm also getting all these other calls from kings and queens and world leaders and you know what it's so crazy. All of a sudden, now that I'm in, I'm the best guy in the world. Uh, so, and so that is the good news. A lot of them that were saying he was the worst person in the world, they're saying he's great now. The problem is their surrogates that we know are financed by him are still attacking. And so I said, look, you can't trust these people. Please press the attack because it's what you said you'd do. Plus, you, you know, they're never going to stop. And I'm not going to tell people what he said to that, but it was quite interesting. Well, of course, when you win the lottery, everyone's your friend. <laughs> what yeah. you care about are the people who chipped in for your ticket ahead of time. So after you have become the president-elect, of course, everybody's going to want to come in and, you know, well, I may have said some things, but hey, we're sorry and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, there's this question around what's going to happen with the Clintons. Well, of course, if people uh, were, were asking him this question, and Leslie Stahl did, they ask him the question, what are you going to do with the Clintons? That's a total gotcha question. It's not up to the president to pursue the Clintons. It's up to the president to put someone in charge of the DOJ who's not going to derail. So he properly demurred. He properly just sidestepped it. Let the grand jury decide. So, so he properly demurred.
Yeah, it's not his, it would be a, a dictator's job would be to go after a political opponent and he doesn't want to seem to be gunning for a political opponent because that's third world dictator style stuff. What he's going to do is he's going to appoint a competent attorney general, someone who's going to pursue that. It's going to go through the FBI's investigation to a grand jury with subpoena powers, with uh, search powers and so on. And maybe he's had a look at these 650,000 emails that were taken off um, the uh, Uma Abedin and Anthony Weiner's computer. Maybe he's had a look at those and all the horrifying things that some people have uh, talked about as being on those, maybe that's enough. Maybe the FBI shared information with him that it's an open and shut case on the Clinton Foundation and he doesn't need to do anything more. So just let the man do his job, and he, which he is not even... No, injured. I totally agree. They're, the only successful attack they can have 66 days out from him being inaugurated, it'll still take a few months for him to actually get going once that happens. We'll know in about four months whether Trump's for real or not, folks is to change the subject and their new attack bots, their new talking points in media is, he's going to betray you, he doesn't know what he's doing, we're all in this great danger. That's what Dave Chappelle said. He goes, what do you mean? We just had our first black president, you know, everything's, I guess, okay. Let's give Trump a shot. This idea that, talk about elitism, that because he's a rich billionaire that built his own business, he's somehow incompetent. Thank God we've got somebody that isn't just a lawyer in there for the first time. Well, isn't it beautiful that after the mainstream media plays the race card and plays the gender card and plays the gay card, America just turns around and says, boom, Trump we're card. playing the Trump card and we take the house. <laughs> we just finished each other's sentence. I love how we're synced up. Um, Matt was listening, uh, one of my producers to you all, he was biking downtown this weekend. And they'd taken over the capital, the communist, literally red flags everywhere. And he described to me a point you were making. Matt, I, I'm, I'm putting you on the spot here. Pop in and repeat what Molyneux said so he can repeat it here. The, uh, the timing was great. I was actually biking past the Capitol building here in Austin, Texas. And uh, there were a bunch of people holding up signs. And it was at that point in time, um, it, it was an episode, uh, maybe a Thursday or Friday show. Your free domain radio, and uh, you had made the point. You said, you know, people on the left, these social justice weaklings, uh, you know, are so upset because reality is not conforming with their fantasies. And I thought that was an excellent point. It it just happened to be at at such the right time. I wanted to put it on a loudspeaker, but um, you know, you gotta you gotta respect these people people's free speech. No, I, I do, think, Matt. Matt, that's a great point. But I mean, to, I mean, to Stefan, th th this is my question. How do you reach out to these people? Because now when I go in a restaurant or whatever, and I start seeing somebody flip out on me or a clerk, I go, oh, my God, you're upset about Trump. And they go, yes, I am, and start crying. I mean, I had a woman not want to serve me and really get rude to me uh, when I was at a liquor store buying two bottles of wine Friday, and she was an anti-Trump person and knew who I was. And so I'm so well-known now, it's for the first time actually gotten to me how pissed they are. And I had a Hispanic guy bow up to me in the gas station, a black guy do it outside the gas station. And I had to turn around and just go, okay, I mean, you're ready to go. Let's go. And, and there's racial attacks happening everywhere. I mean, this is really scary, Stefan. Well, look, I mean, I go back to Princess Diana uh, when, when she died. When Princess Diana died, a lot of people in England, and particularly the women, went through this extraordinary outpouring of grief and, and horror and sadness and, and mourning and all of that. And then they all felt a lot better afterwards, and they all got a lot happier, mental health declined. You know, when fantasies get destroyed, of course it's painful. Uh, fantasy is a drug. Like, if, you, if you're going to go off heroin, if you've been on it for 20 years, you're going to go through withdrawals. It's not the doctor's fault, it's the heroine's fault. And it's the dealer's fault, i.e. the media, if you're but, following But the Democrats the were worse under Hillary. Blacks had double unemployment under, under Obama. I mean, don't they understand uh, that, that Trump is not out to screw them? Well, they don't. Uh, and it is just a matter of growing up. When it comes to socialism and communism, we all start off that way. I mean, we don't pay rent to our parents when we're five years old. We have this big giant structure that takes care of us, provides us food and shelter and organizes our life for us. And at some point, you have to break out of that dependent mode and you have to be your own person. You have to individuate. You have to become who you are and you have to become an adult. You know, when you become an adult, you put away childish things like dependence on authority to provide you with your resources and your reason for being. So it's just a transition. Trump is going to bring about more of the free market, less government dependence. So people are going to have to Exactly. It's the end of childhood. It's the end of childhood yeah. that the left tries to put us into in this straitjacket of, of, of mental illness conformity that is pure authoritarianism. We'll be right back. Cover a bunch of news. Take your phone calls and more with Stefan Molyneux. I'm Alex Jones. Infowars.com.
Folks, we're feeling good because we got somebody saying he's going to get up off our back. He's just going to leave us alone. Let us keep more of our money. But he doesn't want to get rid of Western culture. That's what's exciting to us, not Hillary promising free education and free this and free that. And then in internal meetings with Goldman Sachs, these lazy kids in their mother's basements, don't they know stuff isn't free? It's only free for you when you steal the furniture at the White House and the State Department and everywhere else, you kleptocratic maniac. We're going back to Stefan Molyneux in a moment. And then we've got a bunch of folks joining us. Uh, we have Bracken, the Navy SEAL, and all this destabilization we see, what type of false flags Obama might pull. In the 65 days, they're still in. Don't think they won't try to assassinate Trump. Every hour, directors and TV hosts and rock stars and hip-hop people and uh, editors of magazines and newspapers and journalists call for revolution. Katy Perry, burn the streets, revolution. Some big directors on Infowars.com saying, kill Donald Trump. We need violence. I mean, it's getting crazy. And some stupid young British man uh, he goes and gets a gun and goes and tries to kill Trump. This is creating just an atmosphere of civil war. And these idiots don't understand that that's what Soros did in Ukraine. That's what they did in the Middle East. That's how they bring in a destabilization. And they're so crazy and so emboldened by their past successes. They're going to try that here. That's why Trump's got to play nice right now, get into office, and then roll these people up. Because this is an un-American corporate takeover. We're going back. To our guest, Stefan Molyneux, here in just a moment. First off, one of our great sponsors that makes this broadcast possible is Solutions from Science. We've got a lot of great products, but they're solar generators, very high quality. Do, uh, they're, they're connectable. That's what they're best known for. They have a lot of great videos on their site. Solutions from Science is one of my oldest sponsors. They're selling some of their perfect power solar generators below cost. This is their top-of-the-line model, the one I use at my house. It's expandable, so you can make it as powerful as you want to. Normally around six thousand dollars. You're letting them go for around fifteen hundred right now. Visit powergridchaos.com. That's powergridchaos.com and get yours before they're gone. Powergridchaos.com. And finally, a lot of times our mistakes are your gain. This is not a ploy where I sit here and say, "Oh, they forgot to take the specials down, so free shipping is extended one more day." They didn't forget that they had a cached image in there from yesterday for some reason on the computer. So. I was going, they haven't taken the specials down. When do they, I don't sound like a liar. What do you got? They're like, sir, we've, uh, I'm not a jerk, but we're, we're getting a lot of work done around here. So we're not, it's not playtime. They're like, no, no, no. It was, a, it was a cash damage. We're sorry. So I said, well, I said the free shipping's back on. And I said the 30 to 40% off across the store is back. Storable food, you name it. Some of the water filters and items have sold out, but most of it's there. So it's extended, but it's gone tonight at midnight. We're going to pre-program it. It's going to be gone tonight at midnight. And I want to thank you all for your support as well. Uh, but the special is up there. A lot of these are lost leaders. We also have a new product in that took years to develop. Bio PCA is nineteen ninety five. It's normally thirty dollars. One ingredient in it, and the leading competitors is forty four. I thought every time I pitch this show, people, you know, the, the competitors that has less of one of the ingredients than ours has, and ours has a whole bunch of ingredients that are excellent because a lot of supplements have really cheap ingredients but are high quality. Well, if we can give you cheap ingredients and then sell it inexpensively, but mark it up to fund our operation, we do that. We don't take stuff that has cheap ingredients and then market it at a high price. That's a way to make money. A lot of folks do that. We don't. We want to dominate with the quality, dominate with the price, and become not just a, you know, a radio TV show, but a huge nutraceutical supplement company that passes the highest standards just because we know we're under the gun and, and you know under major uh, targeting by the government. So... Thank you all for your support, but products like this are game changers. DNA Force should be six hundred bucks; it's a hundred bucks. Um, our Silver Bullet should be thirty dollars; it's nineteen ninety five. This should be forty fifty dollars. The Bio PCA, ladies and gentlemen, it's nineteen ninety five. Infowarsstore dot com. But by the way, that's the introductory price, so you can use it and see how good it is. It's going to go up to twenty nine ninety five as soon as the next batch comes in. I'm told it's going to sell out any time. So again, Infowarsstore dot com, Infowarslife dot com, or call toll free. Triple eight two five three three one three nine. Stefan Molyneux is super popular. He's been popular for years, but I love to see his meteoric rise. Uh, now he's more popular with 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 young people. I'd say thirty and up. A lot of the folks we have on are actually very popular with teenagers. Um, that's my next question for him before we get into a bunch of other issues. I'm seeing it at schools, but with Hispanic children, black children, uh, white children, uh, mixed children. A lot of kids are just humans. You know, we're all just humans. 
that that people like Paul Watson, people like uh, Crowder, people like, uh, I mean, there's so many of them, uh, Mark Dice, are just rock star popular with the boys and girls. It's not, it's not hip hop anymore. It's not rock and roll. It's not Katy Perry. It's not, they have rejected, it seems, but not just here, across the country, a growing large minority of young people are completely breaking with things. And I think Trump is only one manifestation, but he is super popular with young people as well. Uh, I mean, I know you're popular with some. I'm more popular 30 and up. I guess I'm getting old. But can you speak to this phenomenon and do you agree with it? I, I think I do. And of, of some of it has to do just with technological expertise. I mean, I'm pretty tech heavy. I'm sure at some point something's going to come along that I just won't be able to wrap my head around. But uh, they're, so they're on the Internet. That That's why they like us, because they've been introduced yeah. to the new media. Well, there's that. And there's two other things I think that are important when it comes to the young. They have a great deal of skepticism about the powers that be. They also were a lot of them put into daycares rather than raised at home by their mothers. And that produces a lot of emotional strength, uh, uh, sorry, emotional trauma, emotional wobbliness, lack of, of, of a bonding with a sort of primary caregiver. And so I think the daycare generation is looking for leadership to become themselves. I don't think they got it as much. And of course, the other thing is that we have a fatherless society in vast sections of the Western world. Well, so they're looking for father figures. Yeah, they're looking for somebody who's going to give them some wisdom that isn't just this kind of manipulative, cucky stuff you get from the mainstream media. That's going to give them some strength, some spine, some manly value, some masculine assertiveness without aggression. Because there's two things that need to be tamed in order for society to function. Number one, male aggression needs to be turned into assertiveness. And number two, female vanity needs to be tamed as well. Because otherwise, there's just more and more consumption, which tends to eat the future at the expense, uh, eat the present at the expense of the future. So... I think younger people are looking for role models who aren't going to tell them what to do, but rather give them the power of critical thought themselves. And that transfer of critical thought is really, really important. I think that's where a lot of the Internet superstars are getting their mojo from. You have hit the nail again precisely on the head stuff on Molyneux of FreeDomainRadio.com. That's really it. They, they hate the guilting and the being told they're bad when they have a sense of innocence and the weirdness and the smarminess and the creepiness. And then they hear folks making fun of it, uh, challenging it. It's, it's also fun to make fun of social justice warriors. It's fun uh, to be politically incorrect. And so I think that's one reason we're winning is we're just more fun. Well, who wants to be bullied around because other people are hyper emotional who wants to restrict themselves because other people can't handle the truth you know if you can't manage your own emotions if you're this big giant raw wound to be poked by everybody's opinions in the world if you can't handle and manage your own emotions alex you always end up wanting to control other people to suppress their free speech because other people have this remote button called free speech that causes you to freak out and flip out and have like panic attacks and hysteria and need hug rooms and puppies and beanbag chairs to to sob into so, of course, if you can't manage your own feelings, the next stop is fascism for other people's free speech because they're a threat to your entire emotional stability, which is kind of shaky to begin with. Exactly. If you look at really rich billionaires that aren't self-made, they're very OCD on average, very cloistered, very scared, very controlling. I mean, they're very uh, Howard Hughes on steroids. And then they create systems that are very suppressive, very controlling, and then they push systems on purpose that basically created a more extreme version of that where these folks are completely scared where now college graduates of a boss one time criticizes their work they have to quit or go home or go talk to HR because you told me I didn't do a good job they are literally creating basket cases well and I, I think that's very very important and boys in America and throughout the West are sick and tired of being told that they're just broken girls, that all they need to do is sit quietly and sit nicely and do things and obey the teacher like the girls do. Boys are rambunctious, boys are aggressive, boys are hyper, boys like to learn hands-on, boys need their recess, and they're ferociously productive as a result. And so I think with the, particularly this, this, these drugs that are being pumped into young boys' brains in order to make them more manageable, people are getting a little angry about that when they grow up and find out how dangerous and how deadly 
really these drugs are for a lot of people uh, they're looking at society and saying wait a minute I didn't conform I didn't comply rather than fix the school system rather than fix the family rather than fix society you drugged me are you kidding is this what you call a solution I no longer respect the ethics that run this society and that is great we need Donald Trump to harness that into something positive because what comes next probably won't be as positive if we don't find a way to harness it that way since we mentioned this we have the 60 minutes clip of him last night where they say your people are doing horrible racist things and the worst thing they could do is show somebody from behind say white power I've seen these videos mentally ill people provocateurs I've experienced them sending people to my pro gun rallies to do this before and learn that they were uh, basically Democratic Party operatives as you mentioned almost all the hate crimes the lacrosse team raping the black stripper the crosses being burned in modern times the swastikas on dorms it almost always turns out to be a false flag over and over and over again but then the real shooting of police attacking facilities and we're not saying the police are perfect the point is Soros is doing this for destabilization he's still doubling down so where is it going and then they have the nerve uh, with Leslie Stahl uh, to sit there and not even you know, admit that their side's 10 times more violent, but instead project it that it's all part of this racist takeover and white lash. And, and I wish Trump would have been more aggressive, but I get now he's trying to be presidential. But, but I would just challenge him to still just cut people off because we all know who's financing the violence. Now, good, good news, his campaign head came out today and said this is all staged. Stop it. But we need the president. They're trying to take away his, his phone. They're trying to say you can't tweet. They're, they're already trying to isolate him. You know, so 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 they control him. Here's the clip. Do you want to say anything to those I, I people? I would say don't do it. That's terrible. Because I'm going to bring this country together. They're harassing Latinos, Muslims. I am so saddened to hear that. And I say stop it. If it, if it helps. I, I will say this. And I'll say it right to the camera. Stop it. Okay. So we're going to take that clip. And we're going to loop. Mexicans with Mexican flags beating a white woman, and it was all funny and cute. We're going to show people saying, kill Trump, kill his wife. We're going to show people shooting police. We're going to show people burning and attacking police cars and knocking out windows and beating up old white men and just keep just keep having her say, your supporters are bad, your supporters are bad, and then, and then remix it with Trump going, stop it, stop it, stop it. That's a video that we're going to hammer them to hell with that I want produced today with my amazing crew. We're going to, and, and again, folks, what's sad about this is the vast majority I'll just be patronizing, it's true, of Hispanics are super hardworking, have very libertarian, conservative family values, and don't like this crap. And they, they tell me, and it's been on the news, they're one of the most bullied groups by the local El Jefes that run around trying to intimidate everybody from the Democratic Party to go along with this whole race narrative when what they want is prosperity. In fact, I think Hispanics are very easily into the Western culture assimilated. The problem is blacks have been held in a plantation system for so long on the Democratic Party plantation that... Those that do break away are wildly successful. They have all the attributes of success, but it's so hard for them ever to get out because their system doesn't let them get out. Stefan, can you comment on that? Well, first of all, we have to remember that just about everything the mainstream media says, particularly about Trump, but in general, is a manipulative falsehood. They're not interested in informing you, they're interested in controlling you and manipulating you. And anybody who, particularly after the election, we got to see very, very clearly the degree of hysterical pro-Democrat fantasy land they were attempting to matrix onto the population as a whole. Believe nothing, believe nothing that they say, and if they are saying anything, understand that there's a complete false equivalency. The person to talk to, about violence in the name of the election is Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama. Those are the people to talk to because the riots are being put out by the Democrat supporters. There's no point talking to Trump about this violence if they're not talking to Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama saying, hey, can't you guys throw a bit of cold water on this uh, increasing infernos engulfing certain areas of America? Then they have no credibility whatsoever. All they're trying to do, as usual, is not make an argument, not analyze facts, not bring information or reason to the debate. They're saying, well, there are people we've heard about who may be associated with you who are bad people. Will you repudiate? And it's just a way of association by smear by association. It's complete nonsense. Now, listen, you and I have to handle the toxic material known as the mainstream media because that's kind of our job. But other people, turn it off. Turn it off. Go find people who aren't going to lie to you for a living. Well said, uh, Stefan Molyneux, if you talk to Donald Trump for five minutes, uh, and he's, he's amazingly even smarter you know, when you're actually talking to him and he's not on television or you know, on the radio, what would you say to Donald Trump? 
It's a great question. Um, I would uh, tell him that uh, everything that got him elected is what is expected. Keep the faith. I mean, people handed him a huge trust. This is not a regular old election. Uh, this is an election that was winner take all for the next generation and winner take all for what kind of civilization or if we're going to have a civilization in the future. People have handed him an enormous amount of trust. They put in an outsider, they put in somebody with no particular political experience and they have handed to him the sacred flame of Western civilization. And uh, he needs to be resolute in what he promised. Uh, he needs to bypass the mainstream media and talk directly to the people because everything that's happening the violent reaction to all of this election is because people have got a distorted view of uh, Donald Trump and what he stands for. Basically, they think he's Voldemort. I mean, <laughs> he should have no nose and you shouldn't say his name. So bypass the mainstream media, talk directly to the people, listen carefully to uh, the demographics, listen carefully to the values. Uh, make sure that you do everything you can to maintain the people who are going to maintain Western civilization as a whole. And so if he does all of that, and if he if he keeps in contact with the people and keeps faith with the people who gave him this awesome amount of trust, he can't do anything but succeed. And if he is able to get the two to three million uh, criminal, felon, felonious illegal uh, immigrants uh, out of America, that is going to be hugely wonderful for all of the people who came to America legally, because they came to America to get away from these kinds of gangs and thugs and drug, drug lords and so on. They don't want them following in. So Focus on what is great for the American public, uh, focus on getting jobs back and growing the economy, and everything else will work out by itself. And, and he'll be the greatest president in history. If he Sorry? even halfway delivers, he will be the greatest president in history. We'll have the biggest boom time, a huge peace time. It will be just, just unbelievable. If he sells out to these little creatures, his name will be absolutely synonymous with treason. And I don't believe for a moment that he will. I think that he's going to need a little bit of course correction, just as we all do. Nobody's perfect. I think he's going to need a little bit of feedback and course correction as he moves forward. But stay I think there, stay there. I agree. And, so and also, we got to give him real support up front because they want to say your base is abandoned. You see, they're all fickle. Work with us. We do not need to like be mean to our girlfriend on the first date and lose her to the thug. We gotta, we gotta, you know, keep this thing going and uh, you know. Get the full ceremony here and, you know, test drive the whole operation first. We'll be right back with Steph. You know, the New York Times calls, the Washington Post calls, the Osmerger Statesman calls. And, and most of the time I don't talk to them. I'm going to talk to them this time because they're writing these articles saying, Alex Jones doesn't seem evil, but does he understand the dangerous fascism of racism that's coming and how much danger we're in? I was just reading this giant article that's like, I'm not exaggerating, 28 pages long out of the Statesman this weekend. Now, only a shorter excerpt was in the paper. Donald Trump thinks Alex Jones. I just called the king of Saudi Arabia, queen of England. Now I'm moving on to you. And that's what he said. Call 61. <laughs> and, and the point is, I haven't gotten into the whole talk. The media really have a heart attack. And it's not about name dropping, but it shows who Donald Trump is. If this was a Bush or Obama, I, I literally would not care about the call. I was attacked by Bush. I was attacked by Obama, Hillary, all by name. It means nothing. I, I mean, I've been on Fox News Live probably 50 times. Almost no traffic to my website. I learned a long time ago the mainstream media had almost no pull. Now it has almost zero. But I want to call him and just say, you've got pictures of Hitler and Charlie Chaplin on here and the dictator. The globalists are the ones setting up a dictatorship. Trump wants to create sovereignty to the larger global fascist threat. Hillary was launching all these wars. All the top real liberals... From everybody from Cy Hirsch to Julian Assange to Bev Harris to the Russians to all the top Russian experts in the U.S. said, Trump is detente. What is this new crazy McCarthyism? And but, but I'm reading this. It's like Alex doesn't seem bad, but he doesn't know the danger. Can someone warn him? I mean, they're really uh, and, and the nuclear war, Stefan. That was the earlier thing when all the experts say Trump's the one for peace. But the thing is, they seem to actually believe their hysteria. Well, I don't know. I mean, the only thing I can imagine, and this sounds uh, pretty dark, but I'll I'll just put it out there for people to sort of mull over and, and chew on their mental molars. But um, what I would say is that um, liberals, when they start wars, um, do they join the military very much? No. It tends to be conservatives who join the military. And part of me wonders if deep down in that soulless cavity where their be human nature used to be, they don't like starting these wars because it gets a lot of people who might vote Republican killed. I mean, that's a pretty dark thought, but I'd say one of the things that I can sort of understand because they claim to be so anti-war and yet they keep starting all these wars and then losing the ones badly that were started previously. How, 
uh, you probably got to go to do five more minutes. That'd be great because I want to ask you in the two minutes before we go to break, and then after that, what else is on your big board? What else you're focused on right now? Well, um, I think one of the most important things that I think could, could happen in America, needs to happen in America, is to expand school choice uh, among um, among parents. This, to me, is something that inner city uh, people are crying out for, begging for. And if we can get school choice, if we can get a voucher system, if we can get some way that parents have a say in how their children are educated, we can begin to push back this endless termite infest infestation. Isn't that real integration is to take the smart kids, no matter what color they are, and let them have a choice and get out of a bad situation? Well, anyone who can't be fired is going to do a bad job. This is why those of us on the cutting edge of media are great at what we do and why we get more and more listeners and more and more impact. Because people can fire us all the time. I mean, people can just not tune into my show or your show. So we're constantly on the edge of not having a job. So we constantly have to keep innovating and doing better and finding better ways to communicate. Make the teachers be in the same with. system. Yeah, we would got to get education into the same system. And when the uh, when uh, when the Western society, when the church lost its grip, like the sort of fundamentalist religiosity lost its grip on education, and it went more towards the free market, Western society flourished. When it then was taken over by the state, well, people bond with who raised. Come them. back the in seventy seconds. Do, do, World War. do more five more minutes on that, and then we've got um, one of our other guests joining us. This is important. Infowars.com, folks. They want to censor that site. Spread it. Infowars.com. Stefan Molyneux is our guest. FreedomainRadio.com. Stefan Molyneux. Uh, Stefan's great at history. I mean, I myself have read a lot of mainline history books. That's why when you, even mainline history books, when you turn on the news and hear America and then it's slavery and Europe and then it's slavery and it's the heart of evil worldwide, you're like, actually, uh, you can say China innovated, uh, you know, the Greeks innovated, uh, the Egyptians innovated. You could say the Chinese innovated massively, so did the Japanese, but that really didn't come over here. They innovated over there, we innovated over here. I mean, the West is where we said, let's treat women good, let's have voting, let's not have slaves. And there were fights for thousands of years over it. But, I mean, here we are today hearing we're the bad guys. And Stefan, you were getting into education and ways to turn this around. I think we're starting to turn the tide, but I think the enemy's going to double down. How do you think they'll double down? Because they seem to be, as you said, digging in instead of realizing that, uh, the, you know, that they can't control everything. Well, when you're not good at debating, when you're not good at thinking, when you're not good at arguing, you tend to turn towards aggression of one kind or another. It may be outward aggression, like you're just going to throw things at people like eggs or bricks or water bottles. It may be uh, more, or you may set fire to things. It may be more passive aggression, like uh, strikes or blocking streets or whatever. These are not arguments. So this is a huge impediment to the forward thrust of a civilized society where we all need to put our best thoughts into the giant arena of ideas and let them tussle out and see which the best ones are. We need to get more choice into the uh, hands of parents when it comes to education because children are being crippled by the current education system and that's not hyperbole. Mentally they are being hobbled, they are being crippled. It's like foot binding or like when you, you hobble your slaves. And we can see this outcome. Young people can't think, they can't reason, they chant slogans, they, they run around topless, they hit people with eggs, they can't think and we can't have a society. I've noticed like none of them at any rally will ever talk to us. There's always an old communist running them saying, shh, don't talk, who gives them the chance? This is, where are their parents? How is some old dirty communist running all these fools? Well, I don't know where the parents are, but I can tell you that the teachers aren't going to give them the facts about the state. Teachers are now completely dependent on the security and protection and monopoly provided to them by the state. There's no choice. We wouldn't run our food system in a communist way. We wouldn't run our transportation systems in a communist way. We wouldn't run our water supplies in a communist way. Why on earth are we taking the most important thing, which is the education of youth, and turning it over to an outright Marxist system that we inherited from the Prussians that was entirely designed to produce placid government workers, factory workers, and soldiers. This is the exact opposite. And by of the way, the Prussians admitted the that they wanted yeah. to produce slaves that, that, that enjoyed their servitude. Yes, and as long as the government controls the education system, it's going to be very, very hard to control the government because we're like ducklings. We bond with whoever raises us. And if, if we're raised by the state and minions of the state, we're going to have a loyalty to the state. I don't think it's an accident that our, one generation after governments took over education, we got World War One. Well, exactly. For those who don't know about the different Prussian states and things, the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Hitler fully adopted the Prussian model. That was one state that basically invented modern psychology, uh, you know, the Hessians, all of it for mercenaries that were slaves but were proud of it because they're fancy uniforms. And 
World War II and Hitler was literally possible and Germans following orders, Germans weren't like that before because of Prussian mind control. Well, and we know how hungry people are for facts, reason, and evidence, right? I mean, my show has been downloaded and viewed a quarter of a billion times. And what I say, similar to what you say, doesn't exactly make people's life easier in the short run because it sometimes puts them in conflicts with the delusions and fantasies of those around them. So even though what we talk about is difficult for people, there's such a giant hunger and thirst for knowledge. And the same occurs for children. Wouldn't it be wonderful if children were as excited to go to school as they are to tune into our shows? What a wonderful world we could have. But we need to bring school choice to the masses, to the parents, in order to weed out the bad teachers, promote the good teachers, and save the world. I agree. Uh, in closing, we've got 20 seconds. They're coming after the web, but now that Trump's in, that's going to block it big time. Well, this is one of the reasons that people are a little surprised. <laughs> why, why do you seem to be so pro Donald Trump? Well, because I like having a job. I love doing what I'm doing. I love talking to the world. And all of that was going to be in threat. I'm in Canada, but a lot of my friends who I work with, like yourself and others, are in the United States. I wanted to watch their back as well. So we wanted to continue this conversation with mankind, which was only possible with Trump in power. That's right. We're all in this together. And, and World War III was looming. I mean, that's, that's a fact. We're not just saying that. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. A great pleasure. All right, we got Mr. Bracken, former Navy SEAL expert on what they might false flag straight ahead. This is Key Intel. Stay with us. Here's the key intel from our own analysis and Bev Harris, the liberal bipartisan top election expert in the country. They tried to steal all the states. They stole five states successfully. Total anomalies, everything going against Trump. 100% of precincts voting against Trump. Impossible total fraud. But he had such landslides in other states, they didn't control all the counties because not everybody's involved in fraud that they lost. They are in complete panic mode. They intend to steal it. Uh, the blue collar workers, particularly black and Hispanic uh, and white, put him over the top. The demographics are out. Even the Washington Post and even Michael Moore has to admit, no, it wasn't racism. I mean, yeah, obviously there are some white people that are racist. They're called losers, folks. But they're trying to organize all these minorities into racist behavior, and that's the lion's share of it. And it's total liberation theology right out of the Communist Party. Now, I want to explain Goldman Sachs and others financed this. This is not a communist threat. They used communism as an operating system. And that was declassified in the church committees in the 70s. They also declassified that um, in the late 90s in Russia, that everything that, uh, that uh, McCarthy said, Joseph McCarthy, was dead on. Our army had been ordered to prop up the Soviet Union. And it was, when he, it was the military telling him that. But that's when they finally brought him down, that there's these robber barons creating authoritarianism so we can then become authoritarian to match it. Trump is right. We should be linking up with Russia to go after the jihadis, to roll them back, because it's the globalists with the jihadis and China teamed up against us. And that's the threat. Folks, we don't get a cyber attack by Russia. We get a cyber attack by China every day. They hate our guts. They're, they're taking over all six major studios. China is taking America over. China is the threat. China, to their own people, by the way. I'd love the Chinese people to be free. They're wonderful folks. Now, we're going to go to Matt Bracken until the bottom of the hour. And then we've got, of course, Roger Stone with Breaking News joining us. There's so much to get to. Uh, they didn't take the special down. When I extended, I tell you, I extended. It's not a gimmick. It's supposed to go down yesterday. Uh, and then there was some snafus and things. So store-wide free shipping uh, today. Until midnight, it's already programmed on the computer to go off the shopping cart. 30% off of uh, the... Supplements like Super Male Vitality, Super Female Vitality, 30% off X2, the Good Halogen, uh, Pure Deep Earth Iodine, which so many people are deficient in. The other stuff you don't absorb properly. 30% off DNA Force. Speaking of absorption, methylcobalamin with acetabyl cobalamin, I pronounced that adenosyl cobalamin, uh, that actually causes massive absorption. The only way to get better absorption is to get medical grade and inject it. This is basically medical grade. You just don't inject it. But it's the same stuff. It goes under your tongue. Uh, that's available. DNA Force is normally 150 bucks. It's got like $60 worth of stuff in the bottle. It's $94.47 right now. Uh, we also have our new hair, nail, and skin formula that should be $60. Bucks. It's $19.95. Just the industry marks up everything. We don't do that. BioPCA. Because a lot of these great formulas are not expensive. And that's what everybody pushes. They'll take the one ingredient in BioPCA, the leading competitors, and sell it for $44. We have more of that in the bottle. And it's got a whole bunch of other ingredients, and it's $19.95. It's about to sell out. Introductory offer. It's normally thirty or twenty nine ninety five. The retail is thirty nine ninety five, and that's a good deal. It's nineteen ninety five. Free shipping. 
InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com, or 888-253-3139. We're about to sell out the red Trump is my president shirt, Legalize Freedom, InfoWars.com on the back. It is important to be out in public with these and to spark conversations, but do it in groups to try to break the intimidation. Just like we do open carry to show that guns aren't illegal, and that's turn the tide of the Second Amendment. We have to do this, but I would not advise this doing this by yourself. Uh, and I'll just tell you point blank, in areas where people have been brainwashed, because there are racial attacks happening everywhere. It's bad. Uh, the, just the, just being led by uh, white uh, graduate student operatives whose only stake in life is not to build a better computer or to have a better job or write a novel or to open up a ski resort or to open up a bed and breakfast or, you know, the great entrepreneurial stuff that made us so wonderful. They want to see power of the state and envision themselves in, 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 in brown shirt, you know, positions of power. That's why they project onto us and keep saying we want to take over. I don't want to go to inauguration. I don't want to be the establishment. I want to get the establishment out and get our republic back. The globalists are our establishment. I want Americanism about globalism. I've got more stuff than I could ever deal with. More cool people inviting me places. More family things to do than I could ever do. I'm not seeking to be fulfilled like the Hollywood scum George Clooney. I am fulfilled. Now, we are joined, ladies and gentlemen, uh, by an uh, individual that has absolutely been standing up against tyranny. Let, uh, let's put his website uh, up on screen for folks because it's so important. Matt Bracken's website, enemies, foreign and domestic dot com. He's written a bunch of novels so he can say things in novels you can't say in books. And he's been popping in for little 20 minute, 30 minute interviews with us as of late. He was with us right before the election. He's now here with us. Uh, hundreds of buses in Austin, hundreds in Chicago, other areas paid for by the Democrats. We've confirmed this. Trump's people have said, stop it. But meanwhile, the media on 60 Minutes say it's Trump's fault. So Matt Bracken, we've got 66 days till he's in. I wouldn't put it past the globalists who are absolutely on their heels, knowing their psychology to set off a nuke at his inauguration, to start a war in 65 days, 66 days. They're trying to plunge the market, but folks are rushing in and propping it up. The citizens are. It's beautiful. Uh, it's, it's such an amazing time to be alive. They're trying to activate civil war. They have all their leaders from Katy Perry to Hollywood directors saying it's time for violence, overthrow, kill, 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 kill people that look like Trump, kill blonde haired, blue eyes. I mean, and the media is the same media, hasn't learned. They're there supporting it and saying it's a good thing. So I'm not an authoritarian, but when foreign outside groups are in your country openly trying to finance the killing of blonde haired, blue eyed people, I guess, because that's what Trump looks like, uh, and the raping of his wife and all of this, there's got to be some point where we're not intimidated by all their calls calling us authoritarian, and it's time to go ahead and have the grand juries indict these people. I mean, I mean, the, 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 we're in danger. And so they're trying to cause a shooting war. We need to arrest these people. If we, if we make it to uh, January 20th um, and Trump is you know, inaugurated, then he can fire all of these corrupt Democrat operatives posing as uh, attorneys general in the DOJ, which he needs to do. I listened very carefully to um, your, your interview with Stefan, and that's another thing that they have to do. They have to take the broom to the stables, along with uh, draining the swamp. They've got to broom out the stables and get rid of these corrupt attorneys general um, and uh, uh, U.S. attorneys. Uh, the media obviously is a complete, just an integral part of this machine. They're not covering the buses that are, you know, the Soros DNC buses that are bringing in these fake paid protesters. Uh, the lady on 60 Minutes, uh, Leslie Stahl, she acted surprised. What do you mean by paid protesters? What could that possibly be? If, as I put it, if the, if the media, American Pravda, the main networks and the main newspapers, if they at this point refuse to cover the busing in of these protesters, then they're part of it. They're just the propaganda arm of this destabilization campaign. The, the advantage we have now is that we do have uh, new media, Breitbart, Drudge, et cetera, Infowars, uh, and they're not going to be able to stop that in the next 90 days. But remember now, the, the Electoral College doesn't vote until uh, December 19th. If um, Donald Trump's airplane, for example, was uh, taken out, I wrote an essay for Infowars a couple weeks ago about that, one of my biggest fears be very, very easy to smuggle a battery pack onto that airplane, uh, just stick it into some uh, cameraman's bag and take down that airplane. If, the, if, the, if Donald Trump is not alive, 
on December 19th, uh, then, then Governor Pence does not automatically become president. It goes to the Electoral College and it's a free for all. So as part of this completely desperate destabilization campaign, I fear very much for Donald Trump's life in the next month. Uh, along with the airplane, I'm very worried about some lunatic being sent out or instigated by these uh, Kramer type operatives. I wrote an essay called Professor Raul X about how easy it is to manipulate people into becoming a weaponized assassin. Very easy to do. Well, they admit in WikiLeaks, they go out and find mentally ill street people, wind them up, give them drugs, money, you name it, and promise them more drugs if they go attack somebody. I mean, they're running then, really dirty ops. Right in, right in Bob Kramer's office, you know, kudos to, to uh, Mr. O'Keefe and Project Veritas, right over Bob Kramer's shoulder in the office are these very uh, stylistic black and yellow posters that he was so proud of that he had in his office. They are the exact printer, the exact, uh, probably the exact printing press that are being passed out at these sp so-called spontaneous rallies. I've seen these black and yellow posters. These are Bob Kramer, DNC, George Soros posters. And I've, I've got to tell the media, you know, you are putting yourself on the firing line by being willing accomplices of this destabilization. That's right. They put themselves not as just as propagandists. They're engaged in literal collaborator attempt to overthrow the U.S. They are collaborators. I mean, if this gets bloody, we're going to win the Civil War. And I'm sorry, they're going to have to be held accountable. They're going to have to go to prison. As, as long as they're calling themselves reporters, if, if you know, if... Ordinary citizens can go out and film 100 buses lined up bringing in protesters and can find the Craigslist ads promising, you know, 15 to $20 an hour to be a professional protester. If 60 Minutes can't find this out, Leslie Stahl, then shame on you for calling yourself a reporter. You're just a stooge. You're just a, a hack and a stooge. You might as well have a Stasi badge behind your, your CBS badge. But um, the, the other thing that in my biggest fear, I, I need to cover this in the time we've got. Uh, when I see these crowds protesting, quote unquote, and they're blocking highways, which you mentioned, uh, blocking a highway is not a peaceful protest. Blocking a highway is a violent act. It's a blockade. If, some, if somebody is on the way to the hospital, if somebody's having a heart attack or about to have a baby, or they're going to get fired because they've been told if they're late again, they're going to be fired. What if it's I got to pick my flag. kids up from school? What if I'm going to get somebody in an airplane? I mean, you know, you, not just people dying. It is a horrible impedance to the general public. You are literally blocking my life. Well, what, now I'm going to I'm going to go from uh, make a little bit of a jump here, a little mental jump here. At the same time, we're seeing obvious false flags at, that are just at the propaganda level with people drawing swastikas and Trump things like that. Now, no Trump fan is going to draw a swastika. So for the CBS to take these at face value, these instigator false flag propaganda ops, and take them as false flags, when we've seen over the last 20 years, 99.9% .9 of the nooses found on campus or you know things of that nature. Turn I was about to say, uh, Matt, I've never seen it where it wasn't a false flag. It, it, it almost all, I, right. I, when has it not been fake? So the media is completely in, in their stooge accomplice collaborator mode when they treat these obvious false flag ops as Trump instigate or as Trump uh, led violence or Trump led, led bullying. So here's where we're going to see the jump. When we see, when we have a highway blocked and there's you know a few thousand people across the freeway and you see these helicopter shots or when they're in downtown and you see them from high building angle shots. You know, I, 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 um, my first novel actually starts with a shooting into a stadium, which is, that's the first page, a mass shooting into a stadium, completely a false flag op, blamed on right-wing militia types. Well, I, I think that that's something like that is going to happen. I, I totally agree. Like the season happen. is for them to stage something and claim that we're attacking. They're putting these crowds out right, right. now. As you said before the election, they'll put crowds in the speech, uh, out in the streets, have them attacked, and then blame it on us to create this mass guilt. That's why Trump's got to get out ahead of this saying, you're putting these crowds out there causing violence. It's going to be your fault if something bad happens. Because I'm very worried. I'm very worried that somebody on top of a building, we, we, we saw the guy in the, the Dallas cop shooter was one of these Professor Raul X types. Uh, Former military. Well, he was the tool. He was so deranged that he actually traveled to Dallas to do that shooting. So when you get people that aren't even home, you know, native to that. Same city. thing happened in Louisiana. So let me expand on that. 
what is the calculus? Because Hillary had polls saying police are unpopular. Well, the polls are police brutality is unpopular in those particular cases, and there are some bad cops, but it's taken out of context to be projected as a destabilization. Fact, not our opinion. So what is the calculus? He overthrew Ukraine that started in anti-police rallies, so he was successful. Same thing happened in some Middle Eastern countries. But now that it's backfired on them, what is the calculus to run the same go out and shoot the cop op when all that did was wake the police up to the new world order and do our job I for us? I, I don't think it's going to be shoot the cop next time. I think that some some deranged left winger is going to do a false flag op. He's no, no, no. I, I agree that's going on, but they're still pushing attack the police narratives. I'm saying what was the thought uh, to do that? Uh, anarchy, just to just to you know make the police uh, at the same time more twitchy about being shot and more afraid to draw their weapon. You know that, that um, we so they just want to put the cops into a bunker mentality. They want to put the cops into a bunker mentality so the communists take over the streets. Correct, but the big the big operation that I see as almost inevitable is going to be somebody on a highway overpass or from a tall building downtown is going to shoot into one of these left wing protests. UT groups. Tower style. It's going to right. It's going to be, and you can't miss. I mean, when you've got, uh, you know, uh, just a mob of people, you don't have to aim. You could practically close your eyes and just dump a magazine or two, um, throw the rifle over over the uh, side of the parking garage, and then be on your way. Of course, it'll be you know leave a little bit of right wing literature, uh, something like that. But it's going to be blamed no matter how. Oh, you know they're going to leave Trump play. literature, Infowars literature, and Nazi literature. You can see it now. Right, and and no matter how patently obvious the false flag is, the uh, uh, American Pravda of collaborator media will play it completely straight. You know they've got their Stasi badge behind their CBS badge, like we saw in 60 Minutes. Absolutely. Going after so how do we counter that? Let folks know that's the next move. So if it happens, we have cameras on the ground that instantly start filming. And that's one thing that's held them up doing clear false flags is because they know we've got eyes and ears everywhere. But it's going to be too tempting from a distant highway overpass or for a from a uh, building, a downtown building at a demonstration. It's just going to be too tempting. Remember, uh, both the left and is certain Islamic groups very famously are willing to drop mortar rounds onto their own people if they can blame it on the enemy. Well, it's that's right. The Wahhabists are very famous in Syria doing false flags, even nerve gassing a mixed Sunni Shiite area. They got caught to, quote, try to trigger the crossing of the red line. And they and they even, for that matter, they don't even think that they're hurting the people that they kill because in their warped minds, the people that they kill are going to go to heaven as martyrs anyway. So you're just doing them a favor, getting them off of their earthly troubles a little bit early, sending them to paradise ahead of schedule. So the left is the same way. They'll they'll absolutely be willing to spray a, spray a couple magazines, you know, just uh, uh, straight into a, a, a protest group, blame it on right wingers. You know, it'll be some AK-47 or AR-15. Uh, you know, right wing literature. Oh yeah, the tell. It'll be a bushmaster. It'll be a bushmaster. The very company they're suing. So, so how do we counter this? And what are some of the other false flags? Getting out ahead of it, right here. Just letting them know that we won't buy it. That even if they inside of their right, their their left wing media echo chamber, you know, their little uh, like facing mirror walls. They're just everywhere they look, they see each other smiling back. They could. That's why they couldn't understand how Trump could win. They were inside of such a of a bubble. Well, we need to let them know that. Folks, your bubble is over. The new media kicked your ass last Tuesday. The new media just slapped you up and down. Sure. That's my next question. What are they thinking in the boardrooms? Because they really thought she was going to win, even if she had to steal it. Their steal failed. It was such a tsunami. That's got to let them know that, again, they don't have air superiority in the media. It's very dangerous for them to pull a false flag when no one's going to buy it. But it, the, the problem now is they've unleashed a dragon. It's not that so much that I'm concerned that some Bob Kramer type that we don't know yet, who's in the department of even dirtier wet ops, that's going to actually wind up some little automaton and send him out. They're sending the automatons out with the media message that Trump is Hitler, Trump is leading to World War III. You know, the, the obvious conclusion in a, to a weak mind is if we want to avoid Hitler in World War III, somebody has to kill Trump. And their message the is message everywhere. Saying. By by CNN, by Time Magazine, by Newsweek, by the New York Times, by the LA Times, by Hollywood directors, kill Trump, kill a supporter, civil war, Katy Perry, kill, kill, civil war, murder, revolution. 
I mean, this is, if, if I was saying, because it's not free speech, folks, when you say kill, murder, civil war. It's, it's a call to sedition against Imagine an elected that. government. I mean, folks, I, uh, I mean, Trump needs to start c coming out and telling Katy Perry and people, you're going to be held accountable, little lady. Yes, and remember that one of one lunatic came all the way from England, stole, tried to steal a cop's pistol just to take a shot at Trump, at a rally a couple months ago. Yeah, so all we're all congratulating. England. We're all congratulating ourselves right now. But Matt Bracken, that's what I've been saying day one. We can't be too, too euphoric because they're not going to let us take Western civilization back without fighting. No, they won't. And the and the the drone army is already unleashed. You know, when you've got people holding up rape Mel Mel Melania signs, and then they broadcast that on national news, a little test test, but they're telling the they're telling all of their loose cannons, their addle-brained, uh, you know, potential future assassins, they're telling them, what you will it? be a hero to at least half of the country if you sacrifice yourself for the greater cause of killing Donald Trump. It's either going to be a bomb on the airplane it's going to be somebody getting lucky with a pistol up close. And I know the Secret Service is absolutely on their toes, but they can't be perfect. I mean, they need to be, but they can't be. But my bigger fear, because let's face it, the Secret Service, at least nobody's going to get a rifle within, you know, a thousand yards of the president. Not likely. Very difficult. But it is so easy now for somebody to go up in a, in a parking garage, dump a magazine or two or three down into a crowd, throw the rifle over, Leave the, some Trump literature and then run away. Get hit the elevator, you're off in a car. By the time that the, the smoke clears, the bodies are collected, the next morning, or actually from that minute on, mainstream media, American Pravda, is going to be calling it a Trump you know, militia massacre. Absolutely. That's my biggest fear that's going to happen probably in the next three months. Something like that. Well, these people are out of their minds because... We just beat them in this election. We're going to beat them in this. If they're dumb enough to do this, it may accelerate their downfall, Matt. I should have you just, back soon to talk about what do we do in the aftermath of them pulling this. So just, just remember, he has to be elected by the Electoral College. doesn't happen until December 19th. If he's not alive to take the, the, uh, ele the election in, on December 19th, it goes to the Electoral College. It's a free-for-all. Sure. Won't that blow up in their face, though, and make him a martyr? I think so, but I think that at this point, they're desperate, like cornered rats and weasels. They're very desperate. I, I agree, Matt Bracken, and they're so they're so delusional is the problem. Desperate that, and delusional. Yeah, that's a, that's a dangerous, I was about to say, dangerous combination. Matt Bracken, enemiesforeignanddomestic.com. Thank you so much. Please come back on again later this week as things develop for a full hour to take phone calls from listeners and really flesh things out. Thank you so much for your uh, great insight. Well, I tell you, that guy is dead on. We got to be really, really vigilant right now. Stay with us. Roger Stone coming up. Hillary Clinton loses the 2016 election. They weep in pain. Europe and others ask, what's wrong with these people? If it isn't Hillary in November, does your act change? Does your outlook My change? act will change because I'll need to learn to speak Spanish because I will move to Spain. Also reserving my... Uh Res my uh, ticket to get out of here if he wins. <laughs> if that mother becomes president, I move my black ass to South Africa. Listen, if he wins, he won't have to worry about immigration. We'll all go back. I know everyone's always idly threatening this, but I'm 100% moving to Canada. I love Canada. And there's an area in Vancouver that I find beautiful and appealing, and I can conduct business. Please leave. Here. Please, Gloria Steinem. It's all leaderless it's women. Beyond my comprehension. To worship the state. Um, Hitler it's said it. it. It's just, it's too crazy. First you get the women. President Donald Trump. <laughs> um, that's not going to happen. First you get the women, then you've got the children, so follow the men. They target women, they, they, they destroy the family, they're totally desperate, and then they sit there and tell them the state is your god. I'm looking at InfoWars.com and DrudgeReport.com right now. Trump will have broad power to crack down on immigration. Mexico scrambles. Sanctuary City showdown. Bills have now been introduced in the House and Senate by Trump surrogates, even ahead of him taking office in 66 days, to remove federal funding from sanctuary cities. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? Let me pull the numbers up. I tweeted it uh, this morning. We can show the real Alex Jones uh, up on Twitter. You can also just pull it up from my... Uh, actual feed itself 
And it is amazing to see this. Let me give you the numbers. Under President Obama, Democrats have lost 900 plus state legislature seats, 900 plus, 12 governors, 69 House seats, 13 Senate seats. That's some legacy. Isn't that just special? And as I've said, a majority of Americans, including white Americans, voted for Obama to prove they weren't racist. We voted for Trump to prove we aren't stupid. And there's something going on now where they go misrepresent what he said he would do. They use their old lies and say, he's not going to deport everybody in the country that's Mexican. Never said that. He said, if you get caught and you're a felon and you've committed a crime, you're going to be deported immediately. No no games. We're going to make it easier for people that don't have criminal records and good to actually get, get documented so you're on a permanent underclass. The Democrats want you as a permanent underclass. But, oh, let's not actually go with what he said. Sir, they're not, sir, you can't let in all the refugees. Well, I thought they're Christian. No, sir, they're mainly jihadis that invaded. They're not vetting them. They're not even checking their IDs. Well, you got to stop all of it until you have that. It might take a week or two, but that's insane. He wants to deport all Muslims. He doesn't want Muslim, one Muslim to come in. So now they've got this paradox where they're misrepresenting what Trump ever said. And now saying he flip-flop on it when he didn't. The only real issue is Rince Priebus. But the bigger question to that is, is that where you keep your enemies close? He knows where, how to run things. I mean, he knows who the people are to get his will done. Then Stephen Bannon is basically above him as the chief counselor. The media is saying they're dual, but what I read out of this is he's, he's on top of him. Uh, the guy that obviously knows the inside baseball. I know a little bit. Talk to Trump. I mean, the media is starting to freak out about this. Like, he, he won't talk to us, but he calls Alex Jones up to thank him. I think that's more of the bona fides of Trump. Um, I wouldn't care if Obama or George W. called me. I would have liked Ronald Reagan if I was around when I, I was around there, but young, you know, I would call me. Uh, but we're doing our part then fighting communists, though, the family was. But just looking at this, I mean, it's so cool that he's so real. And the word is working 20 hours a day from 6 a.m. to like 2 in the morning. No one's, I'm, I mean, I, this guy's like Superman. And I'm not just saying that. You know, they call Kim Jong-un, who can hardly walk, Superman. Never built anything, never did anything. With Trump, no one's ever broken the record he's done. No one's ever defeated an, an enemy like this. No one has ever had the stamina like this. Roger Stone of StoneColdTruth.com, who I want to announce uh, is going to be doing uh, one hour a week with us. In fact, Wednesday, he's doing the fourth hour of the broadcast. And then uh, in the new year, I'm inviting him. He wants to go five days a week or once a week. We're sort of adding a few more shows uh, here to the broadcast, along with the GCN show he uh, does on Saturday mornings, uh, Stone Cold Truth, StoneColdTruth.com. Uh, so it's great to have him here with us. Now, I've already thrown a lot of points out there. And we haven't pre-interviewed this. We haven't talked since yesterday. Uh, but a lot has happened, uh, obviously. You're now not in New York. You're back in Florida at your home there. Uh, but you obviously spent a lot of time with Trump. We can't really get into all that because uh, then those meetings stop if you talk about it. Uh, my talk with him was not off the record, but I'm still not going to even get into it. It was uh, pretty interesting. I'll just say that. Uh, but wow, uh, Roger Stone, uh, a new world. We, we really should be celebrating. They're not going to get the Supreme Court now. The globalists are in trouble. Uh, the TPP is dead officially, they're now saying. Uh, Obama, uh, Trump is now looking to kill the carbon tax. So Kerry is racing to try to block that. Trump is already delivering like no president's ever done less than one week into being president-elect. He's still 66 days out. Uh, Roger Stone. Well, and Alex, the, <clears throat> the president of Mexico, the, uh, the president of, uh, I guess he's actually a premier of Canada, have both announced their willingness to renegotiate NAFTA. That's what strong leadership can do. Uh, and uh, I'm very optimistic and I'm still very excited uh, about this new American revolution. Watching the, uh, the um, losers uh, on, the, uh, on the left protesting here in my hometown of Fort Lauderdale last night, carrying signs I see on TV that say, rape Melania. Th this is deeply disturbing, but it's not going to change the fact that we're going to have an orderly transition uh, to a new government, and that new government is going to lead America in an entirely different direction. Uh, let's talk about uh, the last six days, where you see this going, um, Trump spirits, uh, your gut level on how much he's going to be able to deliver. I mean, obviously, we, we need to work on who he appoints, who's in the administration right now. Uh, we need to obviously protect the president. 
uh, to be able to get his agenda through. I understand, though, he needs to know people that know how the D.C. system works just to have them carry out his will. So, so what do you make of this dual appointment, basically, of two chiefs of staff? Well, look, it's no secret that I uh, uh, was opposed to the appointment of, uh, of Rice Priebus, but I'm going to give the president-elect the, the benefit of the doubt. Uh, he is a shrewd judge of people. He's always been a good judge of talent. Uh, and perhaps he can now use Reince Priebus to his will. My entire objection is not that Priebus isn't a nice fellow. I'm sure that he is. Uh, it's not that he did a bad job at the RNC. I think he did a pretty good job in this election. My only reservation was the fact that his political birthright is Paul Ryan, that he is a Paul Ryan protege and acolyte. Uh, and I always felt strongly that the chief of staff needs to be 100% loyal to the president. Now, I'm not going to prejudge Priebus. Uh, a lot of my friends on the right are unhappy today, but the rebellion that many of them promised has not uh, materialized, and I think that's a good thing. Until I see Reince Priebus doing something that is contrary to the policies of Donald Trump, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. And let me and throw this out here. When I've seen patterns with Trump, like I predicted last Friday, Trump will announce that he's going to be at Trump Tower a lot of the time and not the White House just to break with the Washington establishment. It's not a safe facility. It's got spies all over it. His places are nicer. I predict he won't have vacations, but working vacations at his different mansions and things uh, just to you know remove himself from that structure, that, that he would ignore the press club. He was doing it as I was speaking. Uh, I also... You know, think that what I've seen is he'll use somebody that's backstabbing, but that he needs to get what he wants done till the minute they do something wrong and then throw them overboard like like Chris Christie. Uh, and so I think that Priebus, I'm making a gut level prediction that by May of next year, Rince Priebus is gone. Well, it remains to be seen. I am very happy about the appointment of Steve Bannon for a number of reasons. Bannon understands the Trump coalition. He understands who the good guys are and the bad guys are. Uh, he's got a good historical reference so that when neocons show up now and say, oh, I was with you the whole time, he knows otherwise. Uh, Steve understands the new media, uh, and I think that may be the most important point of all. You see, the old media is dead. You know this, Alex. CBS, NBC, uh, ABC, you know, go ahead and throw uh, the sheet over their face because it's done. Cable's next. I want to elaborate on that and talk about the future the way you see it, but let's take Manon. It's a guy, I've got his cell phone number. I can call him and talk to him. I haven't even called him because I know he's so busy, but uh, I mean, you've told me I probably need to, but the point is that's how outside I am. I actually want to stay outside, uh, but this is a real guy who's anti-New World Order, and when he took over Breitbart, uh, you know, rest in peace, uh, uh, Andrew, got even more hardcore now and is anti-New World Order and helped the president win with a message they had met as basically InfoWars. Well, it's not InfoWars, it's the reality. And they understand that. And so that's got to scare the system that the chief advisor to the president of the United States, number 45, is basically an a older naval veteran, broker, media icon, expert, Alex Jones. I mean, that's got to really upset them. Well, and, then, and I think his most important issue on a personal basis is immigration. So does anyone think that, that Donald Trump is not going to keep his pledge to seal our borders and to get a system that allows us to vet people who wish to come here with Steve Bannon at his at his right hand. He's not. Uh, so I think that uh, Bannon in many ways becomes the keeper of the Trump flame. Uh, he becomes the historical uh, go-to guy in terms of remembering who helped elect Donald Trump and who did not. Uh, I'm very, very happy about Bannon. Sure, and Rince Priebus then becomes just the, the, the navigator for now because he knows these waters. Well, I, he hopefully keeps the trains running on time. The chief of staff job is a functionary. That's a mechanical job. The chief of staff doesn't need to have a philosophy or an opinion even, or a strategy for that matter. He's an implementer. Uh, Donald Trump is his own best strategist. I think Bannon can help him enormously. So uh, this is going to be a very dynamic presidency. Uh, the other thing I learned in the short period of time that I spoke to the president-elect is that the mainstream media is full of reports uh, supposedly emanating from the transition that this one's under consideration, that one's under consideration. The New York Times actually published a list. Alex, it was amazing. Nobody on the New York Times list is actually under consideration. 
best as I could tell. So what you see here is the phenomena of people leaking their own names to try to get into the hunt, uh, get a little uh, notoriety while they're at it, get their 15 minutes, and hopefully shoot their way onto the list. The one thing the president-elect uh, told me when I asked him, how's the transition going? He said, uh, well, I guess they're over there making their lists. But then I'm going to have my own list. I'm going to leave it at that. But uh, Donald Trump has a keen sense of who was for him and who was not. He has a keen sense of who will carry out his, his plans and his goals and who will not. And he is, above all, a doer. He's a guy who gets sure. things done. Well, he told me that our talk was not off the record. And it's just surreal we're talking to the president uh, elect the United States, who is a patriot. But he did want to thank the listeners. He wanted to obviously thank me but um, and say, keep it up. Uh, it's just amazing. Because they're obviously, he's aware of the numbers uh, from Bannon uh, that we did have. I'm sorry, it was 85 million people in one week. Just watch the videos on our platforms. 85 million, not just counting terrestrial radio. We're now up to 240 affiliates. We're getting 10 more the last week. These are big stations. Uh, the, the meteoric rise of InfoWars just shows that we weren't coming up with our own cosmology or political idea. We were bringing back Americana. We were telling the story of how we got taken over. The military and police and public listened. And now... Uh, the responsibility we have, I mean, I, I cannot believe at 42, and I've been asking you to revise, Roger, what I'm supposed to do sitting here with undoubtedly a bigger show than Rush Limbaugh now uh, overall, because we don't just hit old folks, we hit young people, you name it. I mean, we now are the voice of populism and libertarian conservatism in this country, uh, and I'm not calling up asking for anything. I'm not, you're not, I know, not asking for anything. We're not asking for jobs, anything. We want lower taxes, our country back. Uh, we want to vet who comes in. So there's all these arrogant people filled with leftist hate. And, and, and the problem is the left's filling all the new immigrants full of hate. And so we've got to somehow reverse all that. Uh, but, I mean, what should you and I be doing here at this crossroads, our listeners be doing? Because I don't want to be lobbying Trump for what I want. All I said is, please cut our taxes and, you know, follow through. And he said, well, don't worry. I'm, I'm doing as hard as I can, working, you know, 18 hours a day, 20 hours a day. But uh, I just, it's surreal. I, I don't know how to describe it. I think the answer, Alex, is we have to rally people behind the Trump reform agenda. Uh, and uh, that is going to be a Herculean task in itself. Um, there's a couple flashpoint issues here that I think are going to be important. First and foremost is the question of the prosecution of the Clintons. Now, I know how Washington works. I, I worked for three presidents. I lived there for 30 years, uh, 25 years. We'll cover uh, your ass in four to eight years if you cover ours. Right. So it's com this comity is now coming up. Enormous mistake. The president will break faith with his supporters if he does not put the Clinton's misdeeds in front of a grand jury. Now, Mayor Giuliani was right the other day when he said this isn't a decision for the president. It's a decision for the judicial process. By the way, what's happened to Giuliani? He did a lot of stuff in the past I didn't like. Now he's just gold. Everything he's doing, he sounds like Napolitano or something now. Well, he's certainly right on this issue. Uh, I am not one of those who thinks that just because the election's over that the Clintons should escape punishment for their multiple crimes. These are not small crimes. These are multi-million dollar crimes. In some cases, I think they include treason and things that are even worse. So um, I do think we have to keep uh, the administration's feet to the fire on this question of prosecuting the Clintons. I agree. What about, what about Supreme Court? What about Judge Andrew Napolitano? I, look, I have no concerns about Donald Trump. He's going to put solid conservatives on the Supreme Court. He's already released a list. He said he would choose from that list. He obviously could have broader latitude. I would love to see Andrew Napolitano uh, on the Supreme Court uh, or in any position of responsibility in this administration because uh, he's just a great constitutional mind. We've got a minute to break uh, other topics. Well, uh, you know, Alex, it's kind of nice to get home and put your feet up a little bit, get reacquainted uh, with my family. I have decided to write a book. It's entitled The Making of a President, How Donald Trump Orchestrated a Revolution and Proved the Media Wrong. And it will be out by Inauguration Day next year. Wow. So it'll be out in 66 days. It, it's, it is in itself a Herculean task. That's a lot of writing. But I want to tell the inside story, uh, still staying within the bounds of confidentiality, but a real political analysis of how this election was won and how Trump, the man, I think, 
won this despite his campaign in some senses because of his own capability as a communicator. His own instincts. I think it was his instincts and everything and his energy and well, I tell you, he's the man to deliver us out of this new world order. I tell you, he's a modern day Moses if he delivers, and I think he is the real deal. I'm Alex Jones. Final segment with Roger Stone. Then we've got another great host taking over. Stay with us. By the way, uh, the guns went silent right after the election. No more media matters attacks. No more MSNBC attacks. CNN attacks that I was having every day. It really don't matter because they have no audience. I mean, it almost does nothing. But now, hundreds of newspapers. They came. He just mentioned. I said, "Oh, I'll Google Alex Jones." Uh, Huffington Post, Fox News, New York Daily News, media eyed, uh, highly cited, in depth. I mean, it says hundreds when you click it. Uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Conspiracy theorist Alex Jones says Donald Trump called to thank him. Well, it's nice he did that. But see, it's going to be like isolating, telling, don't be with the conspiracy people. Well, that's folks that don't believe mainstream media. That's his base. So, and then some say, oh, is it even true? They're so delusional, they don't get. We brought Donald Trump to a great extent to the party. We built the movement for him to then come and take over with his great leadership. He knows that. You go to the rallies, a third of the folks are wearing our T-shirts, and Trump knows that. I mean, the media doesn't get it. We don't need you. And so, so it's so it's. This is bona fide showing how good Trump is. What's your comments on this, Roger? Yeah, no, I don't understand this concept of because you appear on someone's show, that means that you and he must be. In lockstep agreement on every issue. Alex, you, you and I are good friends. We don't agree on everything. We agree on a lot of things. We probably agree on the big things. But this idea that he can't appear here uh, because, you know, because of any position or view that other people who've been on the show have taken, what kind of liberal nonsense is this? When he goes on with Wolf Blitzer, does that mean he and Wolf agree on everything? It's, it's insulting is what it is. Well, to me, it shows the class... But we know full well most of the campaign folks, other than Bannon, this forum coming on, say, don't be involved with Alex Jones. I mean, and then you walk out there, their whole message and the speeches Trump and Bannon are writing are just central, you know, central info wars. Right. Everyone already knows it. The listeners already know it. The numbers already know it. 85. I told Trump last Friday, 75. They actually correct me. It's 80, 86, or almost 86 million people in one week that tune into our streams. Not, and I'm not bragging, but how does the mainstream media deal with that when they're dead? They don't have a million viewers on their average show. They're a joke. Well, it's interesting, Alex, that the New York Times, the Washington Post, even your local hometown paper there, the Statesman, I think they're finally catching on to the fact that you are outpacing the cable networks by a, a, a long shot uh, and that this is the future uh, of media. Uh, as long as the Internet is never uh, censored, i.e. closed down, this is where it's at. This is the free exchange of ideas that has made the new American Revolution possible. Well, it's amazing. I want to hold you five more minutes to get at other topics. So if you have the questions I've got, I always ask this question, what else is on your big board? What else are you looking at right now? What? Let's cover that next segment. What are you really concerned about the next 66 days till inauguration? I'm worried they're going to try to kill this hero. Well, my greatest concern, of course, is the boarding party from the neocons and the regulars. Uh, and uh, you see this going on every day. Uh, Non-Trump Republicans floating their name for high-level august positions in the administration. Uh, I, I was in the Reagan transition. Uh, I was handling uh, Interior Department matters. I saw this firsthand of the people who were never for Reagan, who played no role in his election, showing up with their hands out immediately after he won. In fact, a lot of them are backstabbers, so we need Trump to understand. We want a new party. We want the old Blue Bloods out. I just want Trump loyalists in. That will preclude the Blue Bloods and the Country Club Republicans right there. In other words, we don't owe John Bolton anything. I like John Bolton. Nice fella. We just don't owe him anything. And plus, his mustache is the most hilarious thing ever. It is up there. I mean, you really can't have a Muppet for the... I mean, come on. For uh, what, what, Secretary of State, or what's, what do you think Muppet's wanting? Se 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 sec death? <laughs> I think he's looking at Secretary of State, and I don't think that's going to happen. Well, if I need a shop broom, I know where to go. I mean, that guy's got a, got a stash you wouldn't believe. <laughs> we'll be right back in 70 seconds. Hour number four, Infowars.com forward slash show. They hate the broadcast. They hate it. Keep spreading the word. You're the Infowar. You're the winners. I love you. 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 And I knew they were stealing it, but the tsunami was too big. New story out on Infowars.com. 
Here's why Trump picked Rince Priebus, his chief of staff. Kit Daniels, keep your friends close, enemies closer. He goes into Louis XIV and all the rest of it. A very interesting article, Infowars.com. In closing, in the four minutes we have left, StoneColdTruth.com. Got your books at Infowars.com. We appreciate all your great work and the, and the uh, you know, work you did behind the, the uh, scenes. Other points that, that, that need to be relayed to folks. Well, we have an inauguration coming up. It's going to be an incredible celebration. Uh, I know that the president-elect wants it to be as broad and as, as inclusive as possible. So uh, those who wish to be uh, invited to the inaugural uh, should send their names and addresses to Infowars.com, uh, and we will pass those on to the uh, inaugural committee. There, there can be any. They can send them to me at Stone Cold Truth. Any patriot who wishes to attend the inauguration, this is going to be a people's inauguration. This isn't going to be a... You know, my son party. wants to go, and, and, and Trump on air invited him to come up and, you know, see him at his office or have dinner or something. I, I, I never really, the times I've talked to Trump, I never, he's like, yeah, I'll come have dinner soon. I'm like, okay. I guess if Trump says that, I should try to actually call up and have that happen. I mean, I mean that would be great, but, but I mean, just going to the, the, the inauguration, I mean, should I even go to that, Stone? Well, uh, Alex, you should. But I think that the president-elect is more interested in the average campaign worker, the, the foot soldiers. No, I totally agree. Road. That's who we should get to go, so they should send that to you. Yeah, well, they can send it to me. Uh, they can send it to either of us. It's just we're a funnel point. Uh, Tom Barrick, uh, who is a close friend of uh, Donald's, a, a longtime friend of mine, the chairman of Colony Capital, which is a real estate opportunity fund in L.A., uh, it will be announced today as the inaugural uh, chairman, very able fellow, probably Donald's closest friend. Um, and uh, I know that he wants to run an inclusive people. Well, you're getting us a news story right now. D D D Donald's about to appoint his, his, his inaugural head, and he's going to have it very grassroots. That's my understanding. He's not so much worried about the executives in the multinational corporations. He's more concerned with the, the foot soldiers, the people who went door to door the people who attended his rallies, the people who worked so hard for this victory. So this is going to be a people's inaugural, and I think Tom Barrick will see to that. Any other points, my friend? I think we've kicked it around pretty good, Alex. I, I must tell you, I'm still celebrating. I've still got stars in my eyes. Look, I worked for four Republican presidents, pardon me, three Republican presidents, nine Republican presidential campaigns. I thought the election of Ronald Reagan was perhaps the greatest day in my life other than the day that I married my wife. Now I have to supplant that. This is an even bigger victory against even longer odds and even against a more entrenched enemy. Sure, this, since the media is freaking out asking what Trump and they're calling what Trump saying to me, first thing he says, how are you doing, Alex? And I said, this is one of the happiest days in my life, except for my kids being born. I just feel like America's been reborn. And he said, ah, oh, I know. He goes, I'm working really hard, but I got so much energy. It feels so good. And he sounded like he was in really good spirits. He's in a great mood. I think he's very excited about the future. It's good to have somebody in there that didn't have to get us, isn't it, Roger? Well, it's good to have an optimist who realizes America's greatest days are ahead of us. That's right. I'm going to come back and hand the baton to David Knight. Roger, it's great working with you in the last year and a half. I love you to death. Love the audience as well. We'll be right back. All right, Buckley Hammond is in here with a live feed going to our new app exclusively, Infowars.com Prime and Infowars.com forward slash APP. And we're, we're all learning how to use it. It's pretty simple. But all the reporters can upload live feeds, tapes, special uh, feeds, special events, speeches. When, when I'm at dinner barbecuing, I'm just going to start talking to you while I'm barbecuing at home. This is like reality TV, but information warfare 24-7. You're welcome to pull the clips off, put them on your own YouTube channel. We'll put some of the select stuff on YouTube and Facebook. But this is about us moving onto our own platform more and more because of the increased censorship of YouTube uh, and Facebook. So I'm going to finish up here with David Knight for just a moment. Uh, and uh, then we're going to do a, a little special live feed just for members of InfoWars Prime, available at InfoWars.com forward slash app, where we have the uh, free iPhone and Droid version of it that has the video feeds of The Daily Show, uh, the articles, this new system has uh, updates, alerts it sends you, just the discounts, 50% off on many of our best-selling items, specials we don't offer anywhere else daily 
to just the folks that have the app. So that's the main reason to have the app for four ninety five a month. That's half price uh, out of the gates. Comes up to forty something a year. That's half price, and that just pays for the bandwidth. This is really about us paying for a platform where we have our own videos uploaded to our own site in real time, so that it's harder for them to shut us down. This is a high tech version of us giving you know you giving us your email to get the free newsletter with exclusive articles and videos and and uh, promo codes and coupons because that's the low tech way to get around censorship if they shut our sites down we've got the most hardcore info warriors email we can send you videos articles and things in an emergency to get around things there's been times we've had to do that so infowars.com forward slash newsletter as well uh so david knight you probably want to go in there for a few minutes buckley to get audio in the control room and then come back in as soon as i get off with david knight in about two minutes i'm gonna do an exclusive talk for members of uh infowars prime the new app. Uh, David, incredible times happening. I, I, I don't want to make it about us, but it's another test of Trump. If he goes after NAFTA and GATT, which they're now announcing the renegotiation today, they're telling Canada and Mexico, get ready. They're scrambling. Uh, he's announcing, the, they're, they're saying TPP is dead. They didn't get it ratified. He will kill it now. So they've announced it's dead. The carbon taxes, he's announced he's going to order the uh, federal agencies that are involved who ignored Congress seven years ago and went ahead with the carbon taxes, that that's illegal and that the uh, Environmental Protection Agency must stop that. Uh, so that's seismic. So he's already delivering. It's amazing. I don't like the Priebus thing, but uh, you know I get why they're doing it. It's because he knows how the whole system runs. It's the biggest bureaucracy, biggest government, biggest thing ever, uh, trillions a year. But bottom line, I'm really excited about what's happening. The fact that Trump, without me asking, I wasn't calling up his chief of staff, got a cell phone number of the guy that is his, uh, well, the, the, his chief advisor, Bannon. I wasn't bugging people, wasn't calling Trump, wasn't asking for interviews. Boom, Donald Trump calls me. Secretary says, Donald Trump would like to talk to you, Mr. Jones. You'd like to talk to him? Yes, boom. Very gracious. The media is crapping themselves. He ignores them. This is the media trying to destroy Trump. But it isn't about how I want access or I'm not asking. Make an InfoWars reporter, uh, you know, access to the White House briefing room. Why? Just so they can be on TV? I just want to be able to cover things and have real questions be asked. And I, 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 I mean, you know, sure. The point is, we're not even jockeying because we've already got our own media system that's beating them. But to now see hundreds of articles flipping out about, oh, my God, oh, my God, is Alex lying or did Donald Trump talk to him? He's been on the show. They can't stand that we're breaking with them. And the more we break with them, they'll go from almost collapsed to completely collapsed. Like I say, Count Dracula at high noon into dust. If Trump absolutely starts pulling away from them because he doesn't need them, they're going to be his enemy. Everything they do is twist against him. Uh, and I think he's balanced it well, but he shouldn't give up his Twitter like they keep saying. They want him to stop communicating. They want him to stop being the first real president in decades. What do you say, David Knight? Well, yeah, Alex, you know, him, him reaching out to you, that was very gracious. And, of course, he's graciously reached out to the family of the New York cop that was just killed uh, last couple of days. So he does that type of thing. And uh, that's just uh, says something about who he is as an individual. You were on the Trump train long before I was. I got on it when I realized that he was truly authentic about the trade issues. And we have seen him now, they, they continually say, just as they put out these false narratives, oh, Donald Trump is going to drop out, he's only in this because he wants to increase his brand name recognition, that he's just trolling us all. They say he should drop out as he got the nomination, then they say, well, he should drop out uh, at, coming up to the election, and then after the election, oh, he needs to step down and resign. He's not going to do it, and he's not going to step back from the promises that he's made. He has repeated and reiterated what he's been saying consistently all along, and again, Alex, it was that that consistency that I had seen going back 30 years, and I realized that he had been running ads complaining about unfair tra trade deals. Exactly. And, 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 and I he said, does hey, some maybe things, this guy's real. Exactly. He does some things that are wrong, but it doesn't matter because he's not out to get us. He's real. It's the genuineness that is important. And That's then right. on the other issues, we can try to change his mind, which I've seen him do. I mean, look, it was uh, leaks and Julian Assange and the whole movement of Snowden that Put him in. I mean, everybody's an MVP. Drudge Report's most important, obviously. Uh, you can then say, uh, you know, that Julian Assange and, and Snowden and, and the Internet and the grassroots and the liberty movement, all of it. And sure, we were there getting the word out to the you know general public, but we were getting the intel from WikiLeaks out from that. So that's the MVP. And, and so Drudge and InfoWars helped put it out. Breitbart helped put it out. You helped put it out. But look, at the end of the day, 
The MVP was the Lakers. So he's got to now juxtapose that. In fact, next time I talk to him, I'm going to bring that up. Well, sir, I understand that you think it's treason if somebody's giving out secret data, but what if it's illegal? That's what got you in. You know, it would be really gracious if you did a pardon for Snowden. Uh, and, I, and I think that's something Trump should, sh should really do just because it... it he, believe me, Trump isn't using the Internet. Trump's not going to do anything illegal. Trump literally, you know, sits there and weighs everything as a businessman. He has nothing to fear from a WikiLeaks situation. They admit that people broke into all his stuff and looked at him, too, and said, that's what Assange said. Oh, yeah, Trump's been broken into. We have it. There's nothing. Mm -hmm. The guy's ridiculously mm -hmm. good. So they know all that. I mean, the guy runs casinos. How, you know, in the modern 30 years, you got to be so clean that you can, you know, eat off the floors, folks, basically, to be able to run a casino, okay, because they really keep eyes on that. The point is, is that Trump is so clean, they don't know what to do. He needs to pardon Snowden. Uh, listen, I'm going to turn this over to you. I just want to tell folks, free shipping extended one more day because it, it didn't get taken down. It kind of did, but the, it was in the system that was still special. So free shipping still extends. Huge specials across the board. 34% off storable foods, 30% off nutraceuticals, InfoWarsLife.com. InfoWarsStore.com or call 888-253-3139. And all of this is your victory, supporting us over the years. We're beginning to win the war. We haven't won the entire war yet, but it's historic time. David Knight from the Central Texas News Center, take it over. You know, Alex, as we look back at Donald Trump, and, and as I was saying with Lionel when we talked on Election Day, one of the things that I think really put Trump over the top and also gave him immunity against all these attacks that the mainstream media said, well, that's it. He's done now. He said such and such and everybody's going to desert him. We understood that he was authentic. It was from the very first debate, the very first question they asked uh, Brett Baer, asked everybody for a show of hands, will you stand behind the nominee if it is not you? And he raised his hand and said, well, I'd have to think about that. And I got to say, when I saw that, that was really amazing. That was, for somebody to be honest about that and say, well, I don't know, I'd honestly have to think about it. When every other politician that was there on the stage would, of course, say the safe thing. Oh, yes, of course, I will back the nominee. And they didn't. Almost to a man, they didn't. Now, there were a few who did, uh, but the big guys did not. They said, oh, of course, we would never think of not backing the nominee. And you heard the same thing from the Democrats saying, well, uh, Donald Trump is complaining because there's corruption in the system. Uh, we'll see, uh, you know, he needs to back Hillary Clinton when she wins and, and not try to create trouble. Now who's trying to create trouble? Now who is out there calling for the assassination of a president-elect? It's all these people on the left. Where is the Southern Poverty Law Center in all this? These people that are out there incessantly, they tell us, uh, ferreting out hate crimes everywhere. Silence from the Southern Poverty Law Center when it's the left doing it, isn't it? Just as it's silence when the people in California say, and these are the, uh, the Democrats in California, the people in Silicon Valley in California saying, hey, we want to secede. We don't share the values of America. And it's like, hey, I'm all for secession. Go for it. This is the first time we've had anybody talk about secession where they haven't muddied the waters with talk of white supremacy and all this other nonsense that they bring in when secession comes up. Look, there's been secession throughout the world over and over again. We seceded in one way from Great Britain. And, of course, that's accepted that it's okay for colonial powers to leave the other people. But, of course, we've seen it over and over again. We've seen Norway and Sweden secede from each other peacefully. We saw Czechoslovakia break apart into the Czech Republic and uh, Slo uh, Slovakia very peacefully. There's a reason that that should be allowed. When we look at the situations, the point out when we're talking about uh, Brexit, and I drew parallels to what Boris Johnson was saying about uh, Brexit to Texas, there were eight points that he made, and I went down point by point and talked about those. And I said, those are very good points, and uh, they all really apply even more so with Texas than it does with Britain getting out of the EU. Because you got to a situation where I understand that just in the state of Texas, you have, and I forget what the numbers were, but I think it was something like about 10 times the number of people just in Texas that we had in all the 13 colonies combined. And so that was a, a problem. And it doesn't get any better, really, by adding technology. Technology doesn't necessarily make it any more representative. Technology may make it easier for dictators to govern you, but it doesn't necessarily make it any easier for you to govern the dictators, except when it comes to the Internet. As long as we've got a free Internet, uh, we can have people looking up information, and that's what needs to continue on from this. And i got to say, when we look at this election, we need to double down and not get complacent and say, all right, Donald Trump eked it out this time. 
Uh, he 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 won. He didn't eke it out. It was a landslide, but still, we were able to, because of a massive landslide, overcome the fraud, the three million plus illegal aliens voting in places, the states that they flipped to Hillary Clinton. We we're still o able to overcome that election fraud, that voter fraud. So go back to sleep. There's nothing to do. No, we have a lot to do. We still have systemic problems in the electoral system, and as the winners, we should double down and get something done while we're in power about this. So that'll be one of the first orders of business. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host, six days after the election. We're going to take a look at some of the statements of violence, not just uh, uh, anger that we see coming out of the left. We're going to look at what's behind that. We're going to look at the, uh, what I like, the, I think we ought to start calling them the uh, mean stream media you know the people who label everybody as bigots and racist whether they are or not people who call you deplorable the people who call for violence the people who call for violence and assassination openly doing it where is the fbi where is the southern poverty law center the anti-defamation league no they're nowhere to be found are they rather selective in their outrage of this i also want to take a look at uh, some other breaking news and we're going to talk in the next segment about all this talk about pushing back on the Electoral College. People who are angry about the Electoral College, don't want it to exist, don't understand what it is, calling for electors to be faithless. They've even got a little website and a petition called faithless.org or .com or something. We're going to take a look at that. And we're also going to look at one of the other issues besides trade that has now come onto the table, and that is the climate change agreements and the executive orders surrounding that. You know, we got to say to Obama and these other people, if you're going to live by the executive order, that's what I tweeted out this weekend, if you're going to live by the executive order, you're going to die by the executive order. You want to shut down the process for treaties and say, we're not going to call it a treaty, we're going to call it something else, an accord, an agreement, a partnership, or whatever. Fine, you do that. And you do it by executive order, and we'll just shut it down by executive order. Because it really was a treaty. Before I get to the news, real quickly, this is the last day. We've now gone for six days, so today is the final day that we're going to offer our election super specials. We've extended it one final day at InfoWarsLife.com. Massive discounts on a wide variety of products. 30% off Super Male Vitality, 30% off DNA Force. That's a big savings, folks, because DNA Force is a very expensive, difficult uh, supplement to produce. You can look at the reasons why BioPQQ is so effective. Uh, so many studies, 170 plus clinical studies. We can take a look at that on our site. Uh, educate yourself as what's involved there and why it is so uh, special, why it is so expensive to produce because of that rare ingredient. 30% off of that, so that's a big savings. 30 to 40% off InfoWars Select Storable Food. That is a huge savings, especially when you look at something that is large, heavy, bulky. We're giving free shipping in addition to that 30 to 40% off Select Storable Food. And that free shipping is store wide. It's not just for the food, it's for everything. All the supplements that you have here, even for things that are not on sale. But then again, we have many items on sale going down the list. 30% off Survival Shield X2, that's our nascent iodine. 30% off Pro Pure King water filters, gravity feed water filters, and 15% off all Mulan Labe apparel. And we also have a loss leader special. You know, all these people who are saying, Trump is not my president. Well, this is your chance to get a T-shirt <laughs> that says Trump is my president. <laughs> so that's a, that was not expected when we produced that. Uh, it was going to be a protest shirt if Hillary managed to uh, flip the election over to herself. Uh, it was going to be an affirmation of how we voted if Donald Trump won. But now it is a counter protest to the people who are rioting and burning throughout the country. I have to say, you know, I'm no stranger to this. I'm old enough that I remember the 1960 riots. I remember all the college protesters and everything. And I remember looking at it as a child and thinking, what do these people think they're going to accomplish? And quite frankly, from my perspective, I th think it exacerbated uh, the problems of the Vietnam War being the fact that they created it with a false flag. And they were waging it in a way that they had absolutely no intention of winning it. They were just using the soldiers as cannon fodder for the military industrial complex. And I could see that as a child, as a teenager. And I, I felt that the, uh, the protesters were not helping that at all. Because what they were doing was they were creating an anger and a backlash. And I gotta say these people that are out there in the streets, thank you so much for helping to get Donald Trump elected in the first place. You had a lot to do with that. You were exhibit A 
as to what we didn't want America to become. So thank you so much uh, for getting out there, for burning American flags and flying Mexican flags and assaulting innocent bystanders and showing us what true anarchy, what a real third world government will look like in America so that we don't want to have open borders. Thank you so much for doing that. And thank you so much from the bottom of my heart to George Soros for continuing to fund this because now what you're doing is you're consolidating the mandate behind Donald Trump after you got him elected, you're now consolidating that mandate. Good job, guys. And I also want to say thank you for pointing out the hypocrisy of the mainstream media, or maybe we ought to start calling them the mainstream media. <laughs> because it's just, it's, it's now down to the point where it is just vicious hatred coming out of these people. Now, where, where was Leslie Stahl when we got all these different film directors and CEOs? I mean, people of that stature going on social media and calling for the assassination of Donald Trump. And Leslie Stahl has, comes after Trump for a couple of isolated incidents that I'm not aware of. I mean, we have thousands of people out there calling for violence and CEOs and film directors calling for violence against Donald Trump and assassination. She has nothing to say about that. That's the bias that continues. It's why they're going to continue to fall. Stay with us. We'll be right back. We're going to talk about the Electoral College. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host this fourth hour. Six days after election, and we still have the left rolling in fits on the floor, trying to swallow their tongue, trying to lash out at everybody. We've got film director Paul Schrader calling for violence to stop Donald Trump. And, of course, I think it's interesting that this is a guy who was involved in films like uh, Taxi Driver, uh, The Last Temptation of Christ. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was a fine film, wasn't it? Last Temptation of Christ. Great, great job there. And Taxi Driver, you know, where you got this uh, vigilante, this very dark film. You know, this vigilante who uh, is into pornography. He, he uh, falls in love with his child, a prostitute. Uh, Hinckley said it inspired him to come after Ronald Reagan. So maybe this film director is hoping that he can inspire somebody uh, to come after Donald Trump. And he's allowed to say this kind of stuff on Facebook. Listen to what he had to say. This is an article that's up on Infowars.com by Paul Joseph Watson. Film director Paul Schrader calls for violence to stop Donald Trump. Here's what he said in his Facebook post. I've spent the last five days meditating on Trump's election. Upon consideration, I believe this is a call to violence. And he says, I felt the call to violence in the 60s, and I feel it again now. Oh, maybe that's um, you know part of what they try to reflect in uh, Taxi Driver. But he goes on to say, we should finance those who support violent resistance. Hmm. Interesting. Not only calling for the assassination of a of president, calling for violent resistance, but also saying you should finance that. He said, we should be willing to take arms like old John Brown. I'm willing to battle with my children. Well, you know, John Brown was an idiot uh, who got a lot of people killed, mostly his friends, okay? Uh, <laughs> and, and he laid the groundwork uh, for the Civil War because he got people in the South very concerned there's going to be an uprising, even though he wasn't successful in getting an uprising going. And I have to ask, you know, as I did in the last segment, where is the Southern Poverty Law Center? Always the guardians against hatred and violence, against the calls for assassination, so they say. No, no, when somebody on the left does it, it's just absolutely fine. So uh, also with the uh, uh, Anti-Defamation League, uh, they don't have anything to say about somebody like this. It's just fine for him to call for that. Uh, we got the Trump campaign manager telling Democrats, uh, this is Kellyanne Conway, uh, tell your violent protesters to stop. She says, it's really time for President Obama and Secretary Clinton to say to these protesters, this man is our president. Well, you know, they're, they're getting close to the point where they're, they're calling out Soros on it, and that's really what they need to do. They need to call Soros out, and they need to call out people like Paul Schrader, and they need to say, if you're going to call on social media, openly call on social how many times do we see little guys? Okay, there's a, there's a different standard of law, isn't there, for the ordinary person versus the well-known person? See, Hillary Clinton can do whatever she wants to to national security. She can have the biggest leak of national security we have ever seen, both in terms of quantity and quality. The biggest overthrow of national security we've ever seen. And yet she gets a pass. You know, bigger than the, the spies on the inside, uh, Phil B. Burgess McLean that uh, betrayed uh, uh, the British intelligence back then. It, it was bigger than that. And yet she gets a pass. And then we see small guys, little guys 
who the guy in the submarine who takes a couple of pictures as a souvenir for himself. And those are things that were classified, would be classified as confidential. That is the lowest level of classification. And I'm telling you, at one point I got classification for confidential. It was my first job. It was a co-op job that I had when I was in college as engineering. And I had to get a, a confidential classification. And it was nothing. The stuff that they, that they classified as confidential is like, seriously? They think this is a secret? They think nobody knows this? This is a joke. And it was a joke to get confidential classification. They went over and they talked to a couple of my neighbors uh, who had known me for a long time. Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, you had to do basically nothing to get there. On the other hand, Hillary Clinton gets Huma Abedin, somebody who had only been in the country for two years. Somebody had close ties to a foreign government, the Saudis. And gets her top secret clearance. And that's a big difference. There's orders. Uh, it's, it's exponentially different between the different levels of uh, classification. Going from confidential to secret. And then from secret to top secret. It's, it's kind of like, um, if you think about it, an earthquake uh, uh, seismic uh, the uh, measurements. They go up exponentially. Okay, It's a big difference between a... Uh, uh, a Richter scale of seven and one of eight, okay? And that's the way it is with the classification settings because they've only got three of them. Of course, there is above top secret. Hillary leaked that as well, but they give her a pass and then they nail these other people. So we got people like this film director. We got people like this CEO. This is another article that's up on Infowars.com. Uh, company places its own CEO on leave after he threatens to assassinate Trump. He says, I'm getting a sniper rifle. Gonna go kill the president-elect. I put on here, this guy's a CEO of something called Packet Sled, a risk management company. Hey, maybe you didn't do the risk analysis when you opened your big mouth on social media. I mean, give me a break. You write something like that on social media. If this was a college student, if this was a black guy in the inner city or a white guy in the inner city or whatever that was poor, uh, you would have the FBI coming in and you would be arrested. We had a guy, I remember when uh, Gerald Ford came to our university to... Um, to campaign. And there was a guy that uh, I, I knew indirectly, uh, knew of, he wasn't a friend of mine, and he shows up at the, at the rally with a uh, toy pistol. And the Secret Service wrestled him down to the ground and we never saw him again. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the guy. I don't know if he was incarcerated. I, I don't know if, uh, we've had uh, Steve Pachenik talk about, you know, the kind of nut jobs that want attention or think they're going to do something. The Travis Bickles, you know, the people, the taxi driver type guys. And he said, yeah, we take them over for psychological evaluation. They just disappear. <laughs> I mean, words to that effect. But so I don't know what happened to that guy. He, I, he never came back to school, though. I can tell you that. But one of the things we need to say is they need to start getting tough about this because they're talking about killing people. And these are people at the upper level. You're going to tolerate that. Uh, those calls to assassination from people who are CEOs, from people who are bigwigs in Hollywood, and saying that we're going to fund violence. Uh, I don't think that should be tolerated, quite frankly. I don't want to live in a violent world. I want to see a lot of change. I want to see, you know, honestly, I want to see more change than these people do. But I want to see it done peacefully. I want to let's try peacefully at first. Want a path to some peaceful change here? Let's let's go with that, and let's shut down these people who are calling for violence, uh, who are plotting this. And we need to do it by saying we're going to uh, pull up criminal charges for inciting violence. We're going to pull up criminal charges for calling for the assassination of a president. We're going to go after Soros uh, for funding this violence. Okay, we're not going to let them create a situation of martial law. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to foment this violence, hoping that there will be a backlash and a martial law. And then they'll say, look, he, he's, a, he's a dictator. We always told you all along he's a dictator. No, they need to use the law to shut down these people who do this just like they would if it was Joe Blow sitting at his computer who didn't have any power. Isn't that interesting? The people who really don't have any power to make this happen, nothing happens to them. Or, or they get arrested. But the people who do have power to make it happen, they get to say this stuff and keep going. Now, a couple more news items before I get into the Electoral College and why it's a good thing, why the founders have saved us yet again. Uh, even if, And I don't believe that Hillary won the popular vote by a million votes. Uh, we have an article up at InvoWars.com. Paul Joseph Watson quoting someone who looks at voter fraud who believes that there were three million illegal aliens who voted. And let me, let me just break that down for Gary Johnson because remember he went apoplectic when somebody used the term illegal alien. Alien means that you're not a citizen. 
illegal means that you're here without getting any legal, following any legal uh, procedure that we have for people to visit our country or to immigrate into our country. It's a very useful term. It really defines it. They're not simply immigrants and they're not simply undocumented. They're undocumented because they've chosen to ignore and thumb their noses at the law. So we've got undocumented voters. We need to do something about this. As I said before we went to commercial break, now is the time for us to say we're not going to allow this massive interjection of computerized machines operating under easily hacked software to run our elections. And we ought to be able to do this with the cooperation of people on the left of goodwill. People in the Dem who are Democrats, people who are independents, everybody ought to want an honest elections and ought to want to do what is necessary to get rid of this corruption that we see. And we ought to start by getting rid of these voting machines. We need to reinstate the processes like we were trying to do here in Texas. Reinstate the processes of allowing us to have capability of auditing the vote afterwards. Why wouldn't you want to have that? Let's just go back to paper ballots because that's what you're going to need to have to audit the votes anyway. Uh, so let's take a look at this uh, thing about uh, why Trump picked Reince Priebus as chief of staff. This is another article up on Infowars.com by Kit Daniels. And basically, folks, this is the old expression, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Kit points out that uh, by selecting him as chief of staff, he's using an age-old strategy to keep former enemies close so they don't rebel. He draws parallels to Louis XIV and others who historically have done this. And I've got to say, I, I did a double take when I saw this. I, as people were floating Priebus's name, I thought, no, seriously, he can't be considering to do Priebus because Priebus was running the RNC, and the RNC gave not a cent to Donald Trump. After having given $50 million to the previous two Republican candidates, Romney and McCain. That was essentially, it wasn't just that they didn't give any money to Donald Trump. It was like giving a $50 million gift to Hillary Clinton, wasn't it? Because that $50 million isn't just running pro-Trump ads, it's running anti-Hillary ads. That was something that would have helped Republicans. They may not have lost uh, any seats if they had uh, done their job, if they had run against Hillary Clinton as the, uh, the, the person who is in charge of a party that has embraced her corruption. I mean, they could have used that all up and down the line, but they chose to set that out. And so I don't see Priebus as an ally of Donald Trump. I, I really do believe, uh, like Kit Daniels said, that what he's doing is uh, keeping his enemies closer. I think that's a wise, wise thing to do. And, of course, uh, Bannon is going to be there. He's kind of split the... Uh, the duties of the chief of staff between Reince Priebus and uh, Bannon from Breitbart. Uh, so that'll be good. That'll be good to have opposing views and also to uh, keep his enemy close to him. One other news article I want to get to before we get to the Electoral College, and that is something that came up at the end of last week. It was on the Drudge Report. You may have seen it. Internet Movie Database is suing the state of California over a law requiring a web their website to remove an actor's age. Now, many of you may have used IMDb. I use it all the time. We, we look up information. We cross-reference movies and directors. You know, like this guy who was um, calling for violence against Donald Trump, who was a taxi driver. Anyway, uh, IMDb is a great source of information. But one of the things they have on there, you look up an actor or an actress, and they'll tell you their name. And in Hollywood, they don't like that. But that's too bad. <laughs> I'm really sorry for them. But this is a very important principle. It's one of the reasons I think that Matt Drudge picked up on this. It's very key. If we allow this to, to stand, you have to understand it sets a principle that the government can come in and regulate content. It is a massive violation of free speech. They're not saying something untrue about these people. I mean, if they had their age wrong, that'd be one thing. This is not slander. It's not libel. It is telling the truth about somebody. And if you can't tell the truth about somebody, even if it's something as unpleasant as their age or the number of spouses that they've had or the number of plastic surgeries they've had or whatever, even if you can't say something that if you can't say something's true about these people, then they have really put the camel's nose under the tent. And this is something that is going to be used to overturn anything in principle. If you accept that principle, then basically you have eviscerated the First Amendment, because the First Amendment stands unless you say something that is untrue about somebody. And it should be that way. So that's a very important case. And again, notice where it's coming from. California. California. 
That's why I said, and I got a lot of people push back on on uh, Twitter. If you want to follow me there, it's uh, Libertarian is my Twitter handle. A lot of people push back on it when I said, uh, let them go. Please let them go. Don't, don't. I said, they don't want to wait for uh, the San Andreas Fault to do the work for them and separate them from the United States. They want to go ahead and do it right now. Go ahead. What can I do to help you leave? And, of course, there's a lot of, of uh, conservative areas in California, northern California, southern Oregon. They have tried to secede. Uh, the state of Jefferson is what they wanted to call it. Not secede from the United States, but just to secede from those two crazy governments that they're, that they're stuck with in California and, and Oregon. And I believe they ought to be able to do that. They, that's why when you look at Ukraine leaving Russia, it's like, okay, fine. And American, the American politicians, the State Department celebrated that. But then when Crimea wanted to leave Ukraine, they said, no, 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 you can't do that. See, it's always that way, isn't it? Going back to the Civil War, as that was coming up, the western part of Virginia said, no, we don't want to secede from the Union. We're going to stay. And so Virginia said, okay, fine. We believe in the principle of secession. That's what this country was founded upon. And so you can go your own way. We'll, you know, create your own state. They created West Virginia. And, of course, it remained that way. The uh, federal government said, we'll recognize West Virginia, but we won't recognize Virginia's right of secession. It's always that way. It's always the double standard. Let's talk for a moment here about the Electoral College, because what's happening here, we've seen throughout social media the last few days, a lot of pushback against the Electoral College. People very angry that we have this instead of a direct democracy. And then the next step. Openly calling for the people who are electors from the various states to say that they're not going to vote for Trump. And we saw the same thing as the uh, leaders of the GOP were calling for the delegates from the states to not vote for Donald Trump at the GOP convention. Openly calling for that, the leadership. And let me just say, right up front, it isn't going to work. It didn't work in the primary. It didn't work for the nomination of Donald Trump as president to call for faithless electors. And it isn't going to work uh, for an even better reason at the national level. But let's talk about why the Electoral College is a good idea. First of all, as we've all seen the map, uh, the, this meme that's going around social media, and we've seen this for the last several elections, if you paint the different counties, you look at a county-by-county county map of the United States, red for Republicans, blue for Democrats, and you see that virtually all of America is red from a geographical standpoint. There's only the high concentration of populations in the Northeast and on the West Coast that turn blue for the most part. And then just a few blue spots in the in everywhere else and, and of course, uh, Illinois as well. But other than that, the vast majority of America is red, geographically speaking. And uh, as the meme that's going around says, uh, look at this, uh, Donald Trump has got better coverage than Verizon. Can you hear us now? <laughs> and see, that's an important reason why we have the Electoral College, is because if you don't have something like that, then you're essentially shutting down the separation of powers that was by design. See, we were never intended to have a pyramid structure of centralized, concentrated power. The thing that the founders of this country feared the most, and the reason they had these long debates before they, there's the map right there. <laughs> you can see, internet wants you to know Trump has better coverage than Verizon. I, I think that's true, but they're going to question that. They're going to do a, a fact check on that to see if he does, so we'll see. But anyway, bottom line is, when you go back to the original debates over the Constitution, the Federalists versus the Anti-Federalists, what they were concerned about, the Anti-Federalists, was that it would all just consolidate over a period of time to Washington. What have we seen? That's precisely what we've seen. And they said it was going to happen that way uh, because there weren't going to be sufficient checks against it. That's why we have not only the division of power at the federal government, dividing it between the legislative, the judicial, and the executive branch there, but also dividing power between the central government, the state government, and the people. And we'll talk more about this when we come back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight. And we have one final segment here. I want to finish up some of my comments on the Electoral College. I'll have more to say about this tonight on the uh, InfoWars Nightly News, as well as talking about the uh, climate change agreements that have kind of quietly come into place. But now this is an excellent chance for Donald Trump to take them down very quickly. And we know from reports that the Trump administration is already looking at ways to do it. It's very easy. They were done by executive order. Just undo them by executive order. We'll talk more about that tonight on the nightly news. 
Before we get back to the news, I just want to remind you that uh, we've been running this special now for six days. It's the uh, election super specials that we've had. Massive discounts, store-wide free shipping. We've sold out of a lot of things like knockout. You know, a lot of people needed a good night's rest out of all, after all this stress. And it's a well-deserved rest for many of you who supported Donald Trump. Just don't stay asleep too long. Uh, we need your uh, need you back at the uh, stations because this, this fight is going to continue in many different ways. But we have other things that even knockout. Even though it's, it's sold out, even though it was not on special, we have a lot of products that are on special. Super Male Vitality, 30% off. DNA Force, 30% off. Survival Shield X2, that's our nascent iodine formula, 30% off. 30% off ProPure King water filters and 30 to 40% off InfoWars Select Storable Food, along with free shipping store wide. And we have a loss leader sale on our Trump is my president shirt. Uh, you can get that now just for nine ninety five. So we had a lot of specials. Take a look at them. This is the last day we're going to be running those, and we thank you for your support. You know, it would not be possible for us to run this organization. This is how we fund it, is with your support. We try to give you, and we do give you, the very best products that we can find that are out there. Natural ingredients, very effective, and that's the way we fund the operation. Doing it ourselves, eliminating corporate sponsors that can pull the rug on us at a key time. And that's why we are setting up this new uh, InfoWars Prime app so that we don't have organizations like YouTube or Facebook pulling the plug on us at key times, as they are likely to do. Uh, we're setting up a more independent news organization. So we'll be telling you more about that in the days to come. And, of course, we've introduced it today. Uh, Alex is uh, uh, shooting some stuff on it right now. So we'll we'll break this down a little bit more for you, tell you a little bit more about what that is in coming days. But real quickly, in the short amount of time we got left, when we look at this Electoral College thing, get the big picture first of all. Understand that the founders did not want a pyramid of power with the federal government at the top. That was the thing that they were most concerned not happen. Yet that is what has happened. And it has happened increasingly as we eviscerate the power of the states. Understand that it was 13 sovereign states that created the central government uh, that we now call the federal government. They did it mainly for the process of purpose of self-defense. And understand that just as we've had all these other sovereign states uh, create the United Nations, and I think that was a big mistake as well, that this whole thing could go down, that the United Nations could go down the same road. I've talked in the past about what I've seen in North Carolina, the county that I lived at, where they used to have jurisdictional boundaries and in each one of these subsections of the county, you would elect an individual person. And so these areas, even the ones that didn't have a massive concentration of population, would still have a say in their government. And what the liberals did is they moved in from a university town in one corner of that county. They first changed the law to make all the electors in the county at large. Then they dominated everything. Think in the other direction. What if we were to have the United Nations, instead of each country having one vote, which is essentially what the Electoral College was set up to be, if instead of having each country have one vote, let's say that we did it as a direct democracy. China and India would run everything. Now, would you trust China to accurately report their vote totals if it was simply a pure population instance? Do you support them to run honest elections? No. I don't support Illinois, New York, or California any more than I trust Red China. That's why we have the Electoral College. I'll break that down more for you tonight. Join us at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern for the InfoWars.